Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Super Geeks Season 2, Episode 11. I'm your host, George, and I'm joined today by the very rare Time Lord Stewie, uh, Sean O'Halloran. And how are you doing today, Sean? I'm hanging in there, my friend. Doing pretty well. Very we've gone, busy. Yeah, we've gone a few uh, episodes without you. Um, it's been very relieving, but now that you're back... Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, how was Halloween... <laughs> With your kids or whatever you guys were doing tonight? Oh, my God. It's been, I've just been, these, like, the two weeks before Halloween, it's just, like, nuts around here. There's, like, so much going on, and it's just, like, um, one thing after the other after the other. And, yeah, it's been going well, but it was very, we had a very efficient night tonight, which is why I'm, I'm here, I'm here with you. So, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we went and did something that we take the kids to every year, but we gotten so used to doing it. That we had, we had a, we had a plan going into it, and not only that, the kids are a lot older now, so it's like not, I'm not worried about toddlers anymore. So yeah, we were right. out. In well, 90, what that 90, means is minutes. that they are wearing cooler costumes than before. like the ones you posted, which looked like was that meant to be the Gorn or Godzilla? What was up with that? That's I think it was a hit. raptor. Was that raptor? is what it, actually oh, was uh, it? No, that's actually, that's a T Rex. He he has the raptor one too. Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think that's a T Rex. I think he had a T Rex one and a, and a and a Raptor one, and it's and it's whatever he wants to be at the time. We actually wore those. <laughs> uh, here, here's what we did because our my our cosplay for the Trek convention, I tried to be as unique as possible. So what I did, if you're a fan of Rick and Morty, um, if you yes. watch the show, okay, then you know that there's a, um, of course there's a multiverse with Rick and Morty. Right. And, right. Uh, and um, well, and there's also in season three we were introduced to the um, the fact that Morty has a uh, he has a punch card. So every tenth adventure, Morty gets to choose. So the theme of our uh, cosplay was that Morty's tenth adventure was to go to this alternate universe to a Star Trek convention, and uh, Rick had no choice. So I was Rick, and I had my uh, I had my Morty uh, my Morty Kirk, and because Hayden, you know, is, insists on wearing that that dinosaur head, um, it was really easy. We uh, we had uh, the, uh, the uh, Mortysaurus, and it, Mortysaurus is an actual thing. <laughs> I looked it up, so it worked out perfectly. We had Mortysaurus in a Captain Kirk costume. So I was walking around the convention with him, going, "I'm Rick. These are my Mortys." <sighs> so, so that was <laughs> our fun. Awesome. And uh, cosplaying as Carlos Pedraza is. Carlos Pedraza. How are you doing, Carlos? Well, disguised as myself, I can assure you that I'm feeling authentically great tonight. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, so Sun couldn't join us tonight because, you know, sometimes people can't always make it, and that's fine. But there is a lot to talk about, and I keep putting this particular first topic off, so I wanted to make this first before it gets buried in the wind. Although hey, I, have I, know, I, know, I know what it is. I know what it is. Uh, I bet you don't. Oh, I bet I do. We're going to talk about whether the moon landing was faked and whether Carlos believes it. <laughs> you're, you're very close. You're very close, but it's actually about Star Wars The Mandalorian. But you're close. Ooh, exciting. This so moon landing, exciting. moon landing, Mandalorian, this sounds similar. I mean, there's M's and L's and N's. There's so M's and L's. And there's landings. Yep. So, That'll and work. Jonathan landings. I'm just kidding. Um, so, Wrong. That was that wasn't even funny. Bad joke. Anyways, yeah, but but we got it, so it worked. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> as long as we get it, it's it's great. That's true. So because, I want to go ahead. What were you going to say? Because it, it, when it comes down to the the recording of the podcast, it only matters if we get it. The hell with everyone else. It's, it's like a secret code club. Well, we're the only ones here, you know, at the moment. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's why. Streaming it that way we can go laugh, laugh and if I you know if we offend anybody we can edit it out but you can't do that in live stream somebody's gonna get offended and they're gonna go report it to somebody um, <laughs> so um, yeah but Star Wars the live action show that John Favreau is doing is called The Mandalorian and it's about it's been sort of I'm paraphrasing but it's about a sort of a gunslinger character that we've never met before who's a Mandalorian warrior. Um, during the time between Return of the Jedi, about six years after the Battle of Endor, which is where they beat the Emperor, killed, killed Darth Vader, died, and Luke did his thing, and the, and the Death Star number two blew up over Endor, and uh, 
I, I whoever wants to start, I personally think this sounds pretty awesome. What do you guys think? Well, I'm going to be a little bit of a skeptic, um, sure. just because I or mean, cynic. I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm going to stick with skeptic for today. Um, so I think it's got a great pedigree in terms of who's producing and writing it. I think John Favreau is fantastic on that, and apparently they're uh, bringing in a lot of uh, celebrity directors uh, to direct several of the episodes. So that may be interesting. Um, I just. I, I'm not sure that the whole sort of loner gunman kind of uh, story is going to be sustainable over the long term. But, you know, I could be wrong. I, I would love to be wrong. What do you think, Sean? All right, take that Halloween candy out of your mouth. No, I lost my spot in the app. I was looking up IMDb. I was going to IMDb just to confirm. Oh, all something. right, yeah. And, and, and I and, you know, I'm doing. Excuse me, you know, I'm doing this for my iPhone. So that's right. I'm trying, that's to, right. I'm trying to navigate through pages here to go. Oh, where the where the hell's team? See, you're not as sophisticated <laughs> as me and Carlos. So that's all right. I know. Okay, so here's uh, here's my take on this. Um, I I agree with everything Carlos said about the wonderful pedigree of the show. And even more than that, uh, I've told you about my about who my my two man crushes are, right? No, uh, Idris Elba. Okay, Jason. Oh Isaacs yeah, yeah, yeah. Idris Elba okay. are my two man, man crushes. I and, I approve of those. By the way, I approve of those man crushes. Th they're excellent ones. And my third one, and this is based. This has been this has been working its way up since I've been watching Narcos like crazy. Is Pedro Pascal, who is our, our lead in this series, if I'm correct? No. Nope. I don't recall off the top of my head. Well, I, I I'm pretty sure he is. Uh, and I didn't think they had brilliant. cast. I don't have they. I haven't. I heard casting announcements. To be honest with you, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't quite remember. But yeah, I don't, I'm not seeing. You know, anything about casting. we're going to give you the, the benefit of the doubt, Sean. And if so, then great to hear about your man crush. No, there's. Check. There's no. There's no casting announcements. There's rumors, but nothing. Nothing's been confirmed. Well, okay. Well, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up later, and I'm gonna confirm. I'm gonna see if I can verify this. But uh, you could be right. You could be right. Regardless, um, I mean, I've if if he's cast for this role, it is the 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 perfect casting for the. the he's absolutely brilliant. I, 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 you were Game of Thrones. You guys watch Game of Thrones? Of course. Oh, of course. Gonna, and by the way, Sean, yeah. just not to sidetrack, we were just talking about pre-show. We're going to be doing, when Game of Thrones final season comes out, we're going to be doing a reaction show um, that may, might be separate from the regular podcast it's, if you happen to be available whenever that happens, which I'm assuming you will because if you can sit around and watch Game of Thrones that night, and you too, Carlos, then, you know, unless you're watching it after the actual night, then I think we can actually talk about it for a few minutes. But anyway, well, I, will, I usually, I will, I usually I watch it live. I, yeah, I'm. Uh, the, see, I usually I usually time shift a couple hours. But here's the thing: for you guys, I'll watch it live so we can get on the air and discuss it. Because well, I remember, I'm, I'm in a different time zone. I'm actually going to well, be seeing it. I'll be true. seeing it ahead of you guys. You, you'll, you'll be seeing it about three hours ahead of. Well, us, that's so, true. Okay. But here's a here's a pro tip that uh, if you have HBO, HBO Go or HBO right. Now, they actually make it available at the time that it. Uh, I, that I'll it subscribe airs to it on the that's East true. Coast. So I you can subscribe to it. watch it online. You, you okay. don't need to if you if you have. Uh, yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is that if George, it's on the George, East Coast, I'll, I'll we can it, watch George, it at the same time on the even, West Coast. I'll make it even easier for you because HBO doesn't even care if you do this. I'll give you my credentials so you can watch, so we can all be, ah! be watching at the same time. Now Security I gotta breach. Now I gotta breach. Now I gotta edit that shit out <laughs> just because. I mean, I did the same thing for somebody for Amazon Prime for Doctor Who earlier. Oh shit, I gotta edit that out now too. Damn, we're all a bunch of pirates. I, I will tell you this one. Here's the thing about it. I wouldn't have said that with it, so so openly about that. If no, don't worry. No, I'm joking. Coming out, and they they're like HBO. HBO is like, yeah, we know people that work with it. It's fine because here's what they what they here's how they look at it. And it's you know from their position, it's a matter of well, if the more people are are sharing it and using it, that means there's more of a chance more people to subscribe to it because they're going to see how great it is. That's their perspective on. Well, it. let me let me just say this real. Services quick. look at it that way. I'll just say this real quick. You you got my juices flowing, and I mean that in a non nasty way. I mean, basically, <laughs> basically, when when Game of Thrones in a comes out, way. no, well, 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So in anyway, <laughs> what I mean is when that when that show when when the final season of Game of Thrones airs, which won't be for a little bit, um, I am going to prepare. So if you guys are in sync with me, we can we can do that so that right after the show airs. We can do an immediate reaction because we, we obviously are free because we're watching the show and we go right into the podcast and we go, what do you think? And we're in our and we're all our adrenaline's pumping and we just, and, you know, the excitement. So if you guys are, we'll check that out. But what was your reason for comparing? I, I, we got off track. What was the reason for you comparing what they're going to do with that with this? It's not so much what they're going to do with that. It's a matter of of who Pedro Pascal is, and, they, and he was, of course, over on Mar Martel. Oh, okay, the okay. Guy, the guy who the guy who has his head unseriously exploded by the mountain, and 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 it was like, oh wait, that's like, right. I did show, hear about that. Yep, You're right. I did hear about that. You're yeah, right. It, when he left Game of Thrones, the thing about it was like it was one of those deals where. Oh, we only knew you for such a short time. He was a great character. He's a fantastic actor. And um, my perspective on, uh, I, I get where Carlos is going with this as far as the, you know, how, how, how long can you run with this gunslinger motif? But what I'm hoping they'll do, and that is what Rebels and what um, the Clone Wars did, and that is to expand and open up the Mandalorian, the, the Mandalorian culture. Yes. And that it, is it's something a complicated culture. And, and and that's why if, 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 if folks who are like people always say, "Can you like Bubba Fett? He's literally had about thirty seconds of on-screen time." He's not a man. Right. He's not a Mandalorian. And I told Carlos about this. It, I knew we were going to go down this road. We have to because George. It's not just George Lucas. Car By the way, um, Sean Carlos doesn't know who Dave Filoni is. So just just give you a heads up. Oh man, you're oh, the worst. You're the worst. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. This is oh, geek cred. Uh, Boba Fett. This is. It's not just George Lucas that said this. Dave Filoni, his protege, who now who runs with the, all the animated things, and he's actually now one of the co-producers on the Mandalorian. Um, he's moved into live action now. He's he of course loves the Mandalorian, just like Dave uh, John Favreau does. And they like Sean was just saying. They opened up the Mandalorian culture not only with uh, what Darth Maul did or Maul when he tried to take when he took over the Mandalorian homeworld in the Clone Wars, and then that translated into a, a whole arc on Rebels but th with Death Watch and all that, and Sean knows what I'm talking about. This is not just an animated story. This is considered canon. They're taking that information and translating it to the big screen, or live screen. Live, you know what I mean, the live action. So George Lucas and Dave Filoni both agree. Boba Fett, although we should actually say Jango Fett, since Boba was his clone son, they were never Mandalorians. They simply were bounty hunters who stole the armor. So the people that were cloned to become the clone troopers were not actually clones of Mandalorians. People assume that because of the way they didn't quite correct that information from Attack of the Clones and going forward. But, uh, yeah, so the Mandalorian culture themselves are completely... They have their own warrior culture, their own history. They could go toe to toe with Jedi's. Uh, they they are, honestly, they're they're kind of with with without the the grunting and the long hair. They 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 kind of have a very Klingon uh, Klingon style very to much, them. As, very much, they have the dark saber, which they've already you shown. Know, you know what you're doing right now, Sean. You're crossing the streams. He, but see, oh, just. But but Disney and uh, and Lucasfilm are already doing that anyways. When they put Maul, they don't they not only put Maul in Solo a Star Wars story, but they actually used the Maul from Rebels. He had the same saber he pulled out, the same hilt, the same everything from Rebels before he was killed by Obi Wan. Spoilers, but it's it's been out there for a while now. And that right. the, the entire hilt, the design, everything was the same one from Rebels. So they were basically trying to tell the audience, I don't care if this is live. The the cartoons counted. That was their the way side, of a visual side note way. here. Side note. Um I want to say about Rebels, Rebels took the most meaningless arc of all time, which was the Darth Maul arc, and turned and turned it into one of the most beautiful. Honest to God, the end the denouement of that, the end oh, yeah. of that arc. Was, Especially when he refaced the emperor, okay. that was incredible. When him and his brother refaced the emperor, you got to. Anyways, I could sidetrack into that. That was, that was Clone Wars, but, but, but here's the thing. Uh, no, no, Clone no, Wars, that was Rebels. Are you sure about that? My, my, am I crossing oh, no. my streams again? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs>
Ah, oh, you're right. He came back in Rebels after that had That's happened. That's right. You're, you are exactly. correct. Him right. and his brother, Savage Opress, faced Palpatine in that f- epic final duel in Clone Wars. You are correct. Right. right. And, and, Palpatine, uh, and Palpatine once again basically said, hey, who the hell do you think you are? You're my bitch at the end of it. Is basically well, no, he said, that. you have now become a rival. You took your own apprentice. And he said, I did all this for you. And he took over Mandalore and all that stuff. Right. Exactly. Um, but what I was going to say about this is that the the complexity the co- the complex nature of which is in, in complex dichotomous hypocritical all at once like I said very similar to the Klingon um, the Klingon culture that we've seen and is um, you know it's 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 it'll be an interesting if he's it played out if he's this our our Mandalorian in the new series is. Um, if he's a representative of the culture itself, um, you know, you're, you're, we're, it's going to be comp- a lot more complex than just going from system to system and being a gun for hire. You Absolutely. Know, gonna, I, I, yep. I, I, I expect a lot of moral dilemma. I expect a lot of, uh, you know, because, you know, you got to look at it. It was like the Mandalorians are like, okay, we're an, we're an honor based culture. And, um, but uh, here's the thing is like, um, we're like, uh, we're kind of, Neutral, but now we're supporting the empire because uh, for a while we, they were yeah. kind of need to, right? And, and then they and then they basically they say you know what, f this shit. We're it, enough. This is not who we are. And you know, and the, the struggle. This is this, it, which uh, rebels was great. And I like I said, I would expect that you know what they've established in um, the Clone Wars and what they've established in Rebels. Uh, I expect that to play out in the new series. That's why I'm more. I'm more positive about it, I think, than Carlos is, uh, because I think it's going to be a lot more. Uh, I, I, I know that, Carla, Carlos. I totally see where Sean's come going with this, and not to be, not to bully on you with the two of us pulling, pushing you into a corner like school hey, kids. Hey, bring it, man, bring it. So, if you actually ever get around to actually watching, you don't even have to watch all of it. You don't have to catch up. Watch the um, the. The Mandalorian arc, just the arc on Clone Wars with Darth Maul taking over Mandalore, the politics that are going on, and then watch some of the episodes of Rebels. You don't, again, you don't have to go through one by one. You can pick anything that has to do with Mandalore. And one of you the can say, George, let me only cut you off there. Good. I, I know we can say that, but Carlos, in my opinion, you would be serving yourself very well. To set some time aside and just watch both of those series through. I mean, I I'm, I'm planning it. I'm planning I be- it. I I really became a believer, and I never thought I would. And I was like, God, these shows are great. And even the first season of Rebels, the first season of Rebels, so like it's like I I looked at, it, I was like, all right, it was okay. But well, hold on, Sean, then, you can't but- you can't tell him. That he can go by the first season of Clone Wars with, with no, some no. of the with some of the Gungan Jar Jar episodes and take it seriously. <laughs> no, but they, this is exactly it. They did this in both these series where they set they they set this up and they and it was it was it was a, it was a slow burn in the beginning and there was not a lot going on. It was like okay, it's all right, but then you get to the last season and you realize exactly why the first season made so much sense. And it not only that. Together. And Not only that, but the final Netflix only season of Clone Wars, um, and although Clone Wars, by the way, is coming back for a final season, which is awesome. Yes. But, but they show you how to f- f- learn how to do the ghost thing that Qui Gon taught him. And they got uh, Liam Nielsen, uh, not the first time, to come back as Qui Gon's voice. Because he doesn't know how to re- materialize as a ghost, but he explains why he can't. So Yoda has to go through this journey, and he actually has to fight Darth Bane himself on the world, the homeworld of the Sith, and he has to go through this journey of relearning things. And Yoda gets excited about lear- uh, being a student again to the Wills. They don't come out and say their names, but in the backstory, and Dave Filoni ex- agrees, they are the Wills. And if you know anything about the backstory that George Lucas establishes, the Wills were an ancient race that. Um, uh, the, the Donnie Yen's character in the Rogue One, he was a guardian of the wills. And the wills have always been this thing in the Star Wars lore. They were an ancient force users. Um, and Sean will know what I mean when I say, like the Bendu, played by Tom Baker, um, that were an ancient race before the Jedi, before the Sith, who understood both sides of the force. And the wills teach, they take Yoda through this entire almost half of a season, training him to discover the true nature of the force so that he can later. Do what he did in Return of the Jedi when he went, just like he passed on yep. to Obi Wan. 
Yeah, without getting too much into the weeds on this, what I what I want to say about the Clone Wars uh, and and Rebels especially is um, what what makes Star Wars great. The films that is is basically we get this condensed mythology um, with, uh, of course, we've got you've got your basic you know your basic moral and philosophical um, <clears throat> tropes there. But what makes the animated series so good? Is how deep they get into the philosophical. I Dave mean, it's, Filoni. It's, it's all about Dave Filoni, it's, and it, it's borderline. Honestly, this sounds almost blasphemous for me today because you know what a ridiculous Trek fan I am. But it's it's borderline up there with some of the best Star Trek as far as, far as some of the philosophy is concerned. Just like just introspection and things like that. I've always said about Star Trek. Star Trek is not preachy. What Star Trek has always tried to do is try to present these moral dilemmas to you and let the audience figure it out on their own. And, and to really think about it and really to take stock of it in, in their own opinions of these things. Um, where, and, I, and there's a lot, there's so much of that, this, this deep philosophical, uh, uh, these deep philosophical messages that are, that are in uh, the Clone Wars and, and Rebels. I never thought I'd be saying this about animated series, but it's so true. They are so well done. When you that, have uh, like the said, right. I, I became a believer. Well, it, it, it boils down to this. When somebody that gives a shit, writes whether it's animated or live action and they write from passion and they direct with passion and you have to direct by the way in animated there is such a thing um and disney has the money and it, the, they are telling a story and they just the media format they're using happens to be animation it, the same thing in comic books and carlos you're a huge comic book fan it's just medium yep that's all it is just look at it that way. So we've beat on that subject enough, but I want to say before we go about that subject that um, what Sean said, times 20. Okay. Yeah. Times I'm, 20, I, I, Sean. Very good. I'm very, I'll put it, to, to sum it up, I'm, I'm very excited about the Mandalorian. And I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm as, as, how do you put that, as sad as I am about um, how Solo tank because it's, I thought it was great. I love that film so much. I actually I was saw it finally. You, you did. did. Did you enjoy yes, it? Yes, I did. I liked yeah. it. You know, it was, I don't, I don't I see what all the ruckus problem. was. I don't know. And, and and I thought he was great. And I thought he was great as Hansel. He had me convinced. From, did you guys from, see that new thing that they put on YouTube where people put Harrison Ford's face on him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, well, now I know what I'll be checking out later. <laughs> check the, no, seriously, check it out later, and we'll talk about this next week. It's, it's but, pretty cool, yeah, but yeah, but as I would say though, it's it's I'm I'm glad I, I unfortunately took this for for Solo to Tank for Lucasfilm to basically get the hey slow your roll message, which they should have gotten because one of the most unique things about what what has made Star Star Wars so unique and so loved over the years is and is well it's it's rarity is really what it comes down to. Yeah, I was going to say a, exactly the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with them giving us a, a, a new flick every year, okay? What I have a problem with is giving us a new flick every six months because you, you've, you've taken all the joy, what made Star Wars special out of it by doing that. Well, hold now, on, if, Sean. <laughs> you're, you're, the argument would work, except we both agree we love this the animated series. So if you have a regular going ongoing Star Wars thing, you're not oversaturating if the story's told well. But that's the same. We're talking about, we were talking about, when we're talking about the Rebels and uh, uh, the, the, the Clone Wars, we're talking about an ongoing kind of, I kind of separate that. I mean, look, I think they can do, I think you can have an animated series in between. But remember, look, you look at the Clone Wars, there was not, there was no Star Wars at all during the Clone Wars. That was it. That's all we had uh, during, that was the, uh, the 2008 to th 2012, yeah, that's true. Uh, 13 reign. So we had nothing before there, and and and, and Rebels was you know it, it came in around the same time all that stuff, but I, the the market really didn't start getting oversaturated until we started talking about okay not just uh, seven eight nine but now we've got all these Star Wars stories in between plus an animated series plus another animated series plus a, a live action series spread it out a bit I don't I don't I I, I, like I, I definitely better. yeah from a from a business perspective that's that's what really concerns me the most is is um, is oversaturation and whether they're making the right choice to throw so much product so quickly um, 
because people don't really get a chance to digest it before the next one comes along. There's no sense of anticipation necessarily. And that, that can, um, uh, rebound against you. Well, with Star Wars, especially the anticipation, like you said, Carlos, for me, I mean, Jesus, I remember back in 1999 when the force, uh, when the, uh, Phantom Menace came out, I remember telling my boss, he played with me. He, I, I was working for a company where I, where I delivered, I drove a truck and I delivered produce. It was a company called, I'm not even going to plug their name because I ended up quitting. So, um, <laughs> but, um, George, I, I don't, it's been 20 years, brother. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, no, but he's still, he's still doing it with his wife. Cause they took, well, of course he is, but other than that, um, but, um, well, we don't know that unless he takes a pill. Anyways, I'm joking. But, um, he, he was like joking with me because uh, he knew how badly I wanted to see the Phantom Menace live the first night. It was a, it was a ritual. Ever since I was a kid, my parents we made sure ever since Star Wars, the, uh, a New Hope, which back then was just Star Wars, and then an Empire Stri the Empire Strikes Back, and then Return of the Jedi. I saw every one of these from day one, and with my ex wife, I saw you know well this was the first one, the Phantom Menace, and I said. Um, to my boss, I had I had already pre-planned this and made sure everybody knew. I don't care if you have to fire me. I'm seeing this movie live, and if you say I can't, I quit. And I was I literally said that to them, and <clears throat> so they did a joke on me where I get back from doing my last run from delivering produce, and they had the, they had loaded up the, the bay with fake. It wasn't even real. It wasn't even real stuff. They were like. Dude, I'm sorry. You gotta do another delivery. We got all this stuff that has to go out. All our clients and I said, I, I literally said, you know what? Fuck f you. I quit, and I threw my <laughs> shit. And, and I, I'm not even joking because you know me. I was passionate, and I didn't even know it's bipolar back then. Screw this, you guys. I'm out. <laughs> and and my bot and I lifted up a big bag of potatoes and I just kind of threw it against the wall and I said, I'm done. You didn't listen to a word I said. You're now you're gonna suffer. Go hire someone new. At short notice, go deliver this shit or go go for yourself. I said, my boss's name was Jim, and I said, you go drive the truck because I'm out. I'm going to see Star Wars. And so he starts laughing his ass off, and so did uh, all the coworkers. And I said, what's so funny? And they're like, you fell for that so bad. <laughs> That's how nice. passionate I was Bunch back of then. Empty boxes there. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, I mean, that's how passionate I was. You're a true uh, believer, George. I mean, I mean, it was the first time, but like Sean said, with anticipation, um, or both of you actually said that, but it's like that, uh, we haven't had, we had not had a new Star Wars movie since The Return of the Jedi back in, I think it was 83. And, right. Well, and we had, I, well, what we got was 97. Uh, we got, well, if you uh, want to count an Ewok Adventure, adventures. but I'm all set with that one. Well, no, yeah, you're right. It's like, you know how many, you know how rare it is that even like people profess to be Star Wars fans even know that exists? It's like, yeah, dude, yeah. that exists. Well, anyway, <laughs> so thing. All right, but, you know we we have the special editions in in ninety seven. Remember how nuts we were just to oh, see yeah. the original film oh, yeah. back on the screen. <laughs> I I, yeah. I I have to say, the reason I knew about the Han Solo scene where they edited it in with he steps on Jabba's tail, which I thought was clever, was the original comic book included the human version of Jabba that they used that scene to edit over. With the slug. Well, I, they, it was in the making of features for... No, no, for no. It was in the original comic. Years. The Marvel comic. Well, I, I know that. I know that. But I, I'm telling you, but there, during the uh, during the 80s, all the... Uh, remember back in the day when you would get like... There was like that... Nickelodeon had like that Lights Camera Action Show with the... And it was hosted by... By Leonard Nimoy, and you had all these other like missing shows, uh, like uh, were really big in the eighties, and they had um, you know what you Wars might have just coined and so name, which might be lights, camera, action, but I we'll see. <laughs> well, that was that was on Nick. That was a Nick show when I was a kid. But there was a uh, they they made a point. There was all these behind the scenes featurettes that were really big back then, and they showed all these cutout scenes from uh, A New Hope. And and uh, yeah, that was one of the scenes. And it's like going back. It's like hate what they did with it um, for two reasons. One, because it looked so damned awful with him trying to step over that tail, but because it kills the flow of that entire cantina. Scene. I actually just, don't mind that, to be honest with you. I actually oh, thought no, I'm, I'm with so Sean much. on this one. I, I think it does kill the flow. I thought it was a bold attempt. For the time, well, but that, but that, but here's the thing, George. The entire, the, the entire premise of all the specialized editions here of 
Well, it was a bo- it basically comes down to it was a bold attempt. It, it's like yeah, well, you know where he not killed it. A good one. Well, you know where he killed it. Han shot first. I loved Solo for setting the record straight. Of course, oh, right, exactly. No, it's it actually Han didn't shoot first. Han fired the only shot. Let's remember. No, that, okay? he shot first. He shot there first. No, there was no second shot. Yeah, Han was the only one that no, shot. No, Han, because Lucas is Rita theory. did not shoot. Well, no. He, uh, are we really going over this territory again, gentlemen? We're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Now, see, now I'm thinking about re- retitling the episode Sean shot first. I don't know. Sean shot first. Hell, yeah. Damn. Yes. Your wife might not like that title. I don't know. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> well, since, oh, since- sh- since Sun is not here this week, I'm going to play the Sunstitute and encourage us to move to our next, our yes, next topic. Let's, let's move along, shall we? Sunstitute might actually be the new title. All right, anyways. Oh, I would love She term. would love that. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm, I'm leaning on that one. So the, Here's the title of this episode. I got it. The Sunstitute and Sean Chap first. Perfect. There you go. Some, <laughs> I, I will probably marry the two into some cleverer form than you just offered. But per- sounds good anyways, to me. <laughs> Sean, what are we moving on to, my friend? <laughs> Doctor Who. Did you oh, watch him? So, oh god, man, it sucks so bad now. You know I'm kidding, right? I yes. do. I knew you Weird. had to be kidding because you have Weird. some. I, the reason I know you're I, kidding because I I said to myself in that two second interval, I said. um no, he has taste. So there's no way he can. <laughs> so I'm going to start with Carlos on this one because Carlos, Sun and I did a reaction who, that's our new se- separate segment. Um, episode two of the Ghost Monument. You guys have seen my social media. You know how much I rave about so far, including, and I, I'll, I, I'm not going to spoil it when I get to my re- sort of gloss over for tonight's episode, uh, with the Rosa Parks episode. But Carlos, uh, I want to. No you- spoilers. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't either. Well, no, no, not about tonight's episode. I'm talking about what I'm going to talk about is the Ghost Monument episode two, the one where you know she, the TARDIS finally comes into play. And Carlos, remember I mentioned you earlier. I was going to ask you a certain question, but first, what do you think about episode well, two, of the I Ghost mean, Monument? I, I liked it. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a setup for for the season and and the new. Uh, uh, the new doctor and the new companions and everything. Uh, I thought it did a good job of giving them each a uh, a role to play, uh, as well as um, you know them uh, standing up for optimism. Um, uh, I liked the the way it started out. Um, you know, with the the interactions with the the two uh, the, the two pilots on the on the different spaceships. Um, uh, so I liked I liked that setup. I liked the planet. Um, you know, the setting I think totally worked for the the themes they were trying to uh, uh, to to promote. Um, I thought that uh, as a way to set up the new TARDIS, it was it was brilliant. Actually, it, it gave you yeah. kind of some some emotional stakes to uh, uh, to 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 build on. Okay, so the question I was going to ask you, this is coming from you as a film director. Okay. So Son and I were talking about this the other night when we did our Reaction Who special side thing. So um, when they did the long shot, when is because a lot of people have talked about this, I had two theories about how a director would handle this, okay? They did this one long, continuous... This is why I love the direction that this new season is going. They did this, this one long shot where you follow the Doctor through the ship, to the cockpit, talking to the guy, hey, what's going on? How can we fix this? What's going on? Let's jettison the back. In my, the way they did it, and the camera kept panning around while they did this one long shot, no cuts. Because I told Sun, I said, you can tell when they do different takes because there's cut, cut, cut from like different face points or whatever. So they might take one, take two, you you do the clipboard. In, in Okay, so my opinion was, if you're going to do one continuous long shot with the dialogue and the camera following you to do this incredibly different way to do it, <coughs> there was only one of two ways you could do it. Excuse me. You can either have them be an anal director where you make them reshoot it, that, that take, that long take, either more than once, or you could simply say, look at the script, 
and I want you guys to improvise your lines. Which direction do you think they went when you think back on what you saw? Uh, anal, definitely, definitely anal. Um, because you just uh, you don't have time to let ang- uh, actors wing it, and uh, especially they, in TV. Yeah, uh, you know, you just don't you don't have the the, the time or the budget. Uh, there's some, you know, feature films that have that the budget that they'll they're willing to to do that. But uh, for something, you know, a, a some long some Star Trek fan films, let a guy take twenty three takes. Uh, yes, well, we won't go down that road tonight. But uh, but the thing is, any any kind of a long, you know, single take like that requires a lot of just technical coordination in terms of camera movements, lighting, uh, because when you when you do takes short takes, um, you have a different lighting setup for each one of those. Um, that makes sense. Do, yep. When you do a single take. You mean that means you have to light for the entire thing for all the angles the the camera is going okay, to be. Okay, so there would be more stake than moves. hoping that it works out of like. Yeah, yeah you, you, is, you need this, it. You it, need it planned very, very precisely. Technically, very tight is what you have to do for that. That, that makes, makes total, total sense. sense. Okay, because we had a debate with that, and I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes directors kind of, if they trust the actors, they kind of say wing it. But the more I thought about it, like after you, as you're saying that, I'm like. There was a lot of technical jargon that Jody had to say. If she improvised it, I'm not saying she couldn't do it, but it would have required a lot of uh, faith. Well, and, well, yeah. Got, it's like Carlos said, though. Too, you've also got you've got your guys, you've got your grips, you got your guys handling the lights, you got all this other stuff. Yeah, they did. They handled all set up perfectly, fall down perfectly in sync to make this happen. Now, Carlos, so sort of queuing off of that, from a technical t- standpoint, as we're talking about. I feel the cinematography for this episode was incredible. Um, what did you think of that from the camera work? Well, they they actually they obviously spent some money on on this episode, um, and because which is good, you know, upfront because you're trying to uh, win over an audience, and in some and in this case with this series, win win back an audience because uh, we know that the, for the last few seasons, um, the audience numbers, at least in the UK, were were going down um they've been bleeding yeah yeah for for a while now so uh so they really wanted to take the opportunity to to establish establish this firmly as a uh a new direction and one that people should be interested in and i think that uh, uh they made some choices in how they're spending money here to you know on the location filming the special effects um that you know i think i think they're seeing pay off then was it, am I am I crazy? But I I'm gonna go back to this. But this wasn't shot in sixteen nine, was it? This was like two thirty four one, wasn't it? Um, it was widescreen. Um, yeah, that's yeah, super widescreen. Um, right? No, it was. They, it was widescreen. They they, they 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 shot it. This was this was shot cinematically. Is my point on this? Yes, yeah, exactly. And, yep. And and um, what it, it's been very clear. Uh, look, remember the first time we talked about this. I think it was my either my first or second appearance on the show, and I t- explained to you exactly why I was so skeptical. I hoped for the best, but I expected the worst, and I am so so happy to say how wrong I was. I'm, I'm oh, I oh, I could have told you how wrong you were. For, for, no, I'm just kidding. Well, well, you could, you, but you could, nobody really could until we actually saw what came out, and I'm seeing uh, uh, there's it's it's so reinvigorated. The series has become so reinvigorated. It's it's it, the direction of this. They've done such a is, it, it, what's his name, Chris Chibnall? Ch- uh, Chibnall. Chibnall. Okay, uh, I would Ch- with a P of, with a B, not a P. Chibnall. I keep getting it wrong. Chibnall. Right. I I've um, I, I was a big fan of of the first few seasons of Broadchurch. Yes, and, me too. Uh, and, yeah, me and, too. And I, it, and I went back, and I was, and, and, and it occurred to me, you know, watching these first two. I've only seen the first two myself um, uh, 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 of the new season. Um, it occurred to me watching these episodes of this uh, how his his dedication to it's about to to visual storytelling. It, oh, I mean, big time! Yes, and and this is what I think has been lost since about season. I'm going to have to go. Five, six, I'm going to have to go since about season seven, okay, where there has been – my problem has been with, with, with Doctor Who is that it's just not, not just letting the story happen, okay? Too much of exposition, 
far too much of of techno babble that that would put the TNG right. No, in. I would it's actually cool. argue the counter to that, Sean. I think that you'll. I'm, I'm not going to spoil this. They, I think that Jody as a doctor, she gives just enough exposition. This that is was exactly my point. My that friend. was lacking. Yeah, no, well, no, I think I think it was I think the exposition was overkill, in it to the point where any kind of good information you got out of the episodes during the Capaldi era got lost. This is what what I've seen so far is first and foremost, like I said, I it's like with um, the the new kid that plays uh, Han Solo. I immediately said, "Yep, that's Han Solo." The moment she the, she started talking, I said. She's a doctor. No question about it. That is our doctor. And I have, and I've been, she, and she just cuts right to the chase and gets us going where we need to go. And I love it. I, I, the, it, Doctor Who has done two things because I will never say that Doctor Who has had some of the greatest science fiction stories of all time because no, they, it's a lot, of, which is fine though. To me, science fiction, a lot of science fiction comes down to one, how much fun did I have? Two, how did it emotionally affect me? And I'll give you a story here. Um, back when my daughter was five years old, and this is when I first started. Well, how old, she, how old is she now? Just to give some. Uh, She's reference. twelve. Okay, She's twelve. She just turned twelve. Okay, when she was five years old, um, I was just getting into um, into what we affectionately call now New Who, which is basically the Russell right. Davies, Stephen right. Moffat, and, and Ford, where we are today. Anything okay. from two thousand five's Rose Armour is considered New Who with you, right? Exactly. Right. And so um, I put on for her, and I had seen it before. I put on, and I'm a big fan of the Christmas specials um, up till about, I think probably up to about this one. I think the one after this one, I can't remember which one it was. I think the one after this one was good. But the, the, uh, the Doctor, the uh, Widow in the Wardrobe is one of my favorite. I love that. That is, a, that, is a, that is a great one. It yes. is so wonderful. Yes. I love and it. My and at the end of the episode, my you know five year olds don't you don't understand this stuff. They don't, and this the, these deep kind of stories and everything. And my five year old daughter was crying, and it's like I, I choke up thinking about this. And he talks about of, the sad, how it's always sad, right? Right, and 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 and, and you know this of uh, choking up here, this notion of of losing your father like that, losing your father, and and just out of just so suddenly, and and you know. Um, and she got it at five years old because they didn't, the writing on that episode is so, so good and so perfect. Absolutely. So well done I totally that, agree. That, that a, a five-year-old completely understood the emotional weight of that show. And that is when Doctor Who is at its best, when it's able to do that. And can I, can I jump in episodes, just, can I just jump in real quick before you finish your thought and hold your bookmark, your thought, because I want to sure. hear it. Right. Wait, because you're talking about that episode, there's a sur sort of a personal note on that story because I raised a daughter too, and I got her into Doctor Who, and she made she got so. And, and when I raised her solo, she raised she she did uh, forty thousand or an, or more views on an, a YouTube thing she did from for Doctor Who. She got so obsessed. With Doctor Who. But there's that when you're talking about that episode, the reason why I like to point out the one you just mentioned, the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe is that ending scene, and I, I juxtapose this with the very last scene from Star Trek The Next Generation, All Good Things, the final scene, the poker game. When, every, when Picard walks into the, into the room where they're playing poker, and they say, you are always welcome. Well, Troy said that. And he, and he said, I should have done this a long time ago. You, if you mirror that scene... With Matt Smith showing up at the Pond's residence, and they said, "We all we had, we, uh, you didn't know we had a table. Show. We had a table waiting. You never knew I was coming." They said, "You were always welcome," oh. or something like something. We were we were expecting you. Right. I can't remember the exact right. dialogue, but and then she squirts him in the face with the squirt gun. But when they said that scene and he teared up, I I used to juxtapose that scene with that final ending scene of Next Generation, All Good Things, with Picard at the poker table, where they they said, with the whole idea was that. You have friends that like love you so much that they just set a place for you. That was exactly the same emotion, right? And it was more than that. It's, it's and I hate doing this because the the, the running joke with uh, the last Jedi is it's about family, but no, it's about family. That's what that it episode, is. Yep, it, it, TNG, that all good things is about is that hey, at the end of the at the end of seven years, 
these they were let's never forget you know that they weren't just family but you know all of us on that adventure together we were all family in that too and i could go on and on about this yeah i could too next to star, totally. to, to star trek fandom but yeah doctor who did the exact same thing with the with the doctor the widow in the wardrobe it was the exact same thing it was like Look, you're not just our friend. You are family. That's why we've always had a place here set for you, just as we would if we ha if we were waiting for mom or dad to come, who we haven't, we haven't seen, or our brother. Okay, you have always had a place for that. Was right. It, it was a great juxtaposition. I agree with you on that. But you know, it's like I said. You know, this is the. Uh, when Doctor Who does this, this is where they really succeed. I don't. I honestly, it's like I. I it's it's rare that I can give you a synopsis after 10 seasons of a Doctor Who episode completely and be have it be accurate. But I can tell you how it made me feel. And that that's the way is it where be. I'm at right now. That's exactly where I am right now with this, is that, that you know, people were... I, I saw Ho Whovians complaining about the first episode, how weak it was. And I was like, I was like you, hey, what do you... you this ain't Shakespeare, Shakespeare, man. This is just good, fun sci-fi, and it makes you feel good at the end of the day. You know, my only complaints, and I, I will say this again, my only complaints, I, it's like, I, let's let's tone down the the murderiness a bit here. I, I it's like, I, I know, it really, it kind of hit hard. It was like, you know, you had that scene in the first episode. I don't like to dwell on this, but you had that scene in the first episode where you got that that uh, that he was like a security guard, and, right. and, uh, and he was he's talking to his the guy granddaughter. Over, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and then and then like two seconds later, he's murdered for nothing. It's like, well, I damn, hate that. that. Was, yeah, that, that was that was a downer. Why the hell did you do that? This this was going so well, but I'm yeah. I'm there was there was a, a real of, a real body count on that one. Right, I and, and I'm I'm and I'm. It's like people keep talking about the. Uh, about uh, a salad guy, okay, as like the, the new pop culture icon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me point something out to you. Salad guy is dead, okay? <laughs> they killed him off well, 30 seconds after the Yeah, you know what, though? There was that, Sean, if you had been with us last week, uh, it, what we found out was the Sheffield fans of the show, apparently that's a inside joke because apparently that's okay. a Sheffield drunk, as Carlos, Carlos even said, is that the way you get drunk in Sheffield? Is that a thing? And, <laughs> and it, honestly, from what I keep hearing, yeah. If you go to Sheffield and you dress up like that, you and you could be alien warrior or whatever. If Thanos himself could show up, and they they would throw a salad at him. Just zero fucks given, huh? Just they zero, lots zero of salad. Well, no zero uh, plus salads given. Apparently, as a weapon, you know, yeah, Tony it's Stark. It's Sheffield. It's Sheffield. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to mention one thing I could go seriously. I'm getting a little emotional when Sean was talking about the comparison to the daughter. Cause you guys have seen my posts. Honestly, there's so many things about doctor who that bring back certain emotions, but I want to tell you guys, I know you guys haven't seen this. I'm not going to spoil it. I swear to God. I'm just going to, you've seen my post tonight's episode. Rosa about Rosa parks. They, they took it to the next level. I've never seen in, I'm not even saying this lightly. I know that I, I, I tend to react emotionally because I am bipolar. I don't care if the, the public knows. I don't care. I, we are bipolar people. We, we feel emotion a little, a little bit, sometimes more intensely, but we can dial it down. And I'm saying this with complete level sort of thinking uh, as far as I believe. Tonight's episode of Doctor Who, episode called Rosa, was one of the most incredible experiences I think it's going to get, it's already getting attention. I think this is one of the most incredibly iconic episodes you will ever, historically, historical, I, what I mean is, do you guys remember the Matt Smith episode, Vincent and the Doctor, which caused a lot of, it, to this day, a lot of It's emotion. my favorite episode of all time. It's, it beats it's it, one of the, yeah. of the best known, for sure. It beats it by a thousand percent. And I'm not. It, you guys only have my word. Well, we'll see about that, won't we, George? Well, we will. I, I, well, I, I, here's the thing. I just, I, I just happened to hit Facebook while we we're while you're talking there, George. And yes, I was paying attention. But I, the first post that popped up in my in my feed was from our good buddy Gabe Kerr, and he basically said the exact same thing you did. He watched it twice because it's he had not... to take it in the second time, and he says it's even. And, and he says that it's even better. Than 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 Vincent, Vincent and the Doctor, which, it like, is, and, and that's a very high bar to set. So I'm really I knew that when it. I said that. I, like just throwing it out there, like to the wind, just to say something reactionary. This was, I mean, I literally my girlfriend, my girlfriend was like, 
what what are you crying about? Because she can't see what I'm doing on the computer. And I said, you have no idea what I just experienced. And I told her, when you get back, she's hanging out with her girlfriend right now. And I said, when you get back, I need you to watch this with me. She was like, okay. Uh, this episode, not only is it a historically uh, informative episode, but it is an emotionally informative episode. This episode exemplified what the new season of direction of Doctor Who is going to do. I again this is I don't consider this a spoiler. Okay, consider this a preview. Imagine Martha Jones a few years ago during that Vincent and the Doctor episode. No, it wasn't her, it was Amy Pond. Imagine back during the um Shakespeare episode when when they glossed over the fact that she around okay. They barely mention it like it's a thing. There may have been two episodes of Doctor Who where the companion and they use the whole like um you know, the perception filter. Oh, no, they're not going to notice your your whatever. But they, they kind of, because they're trying to be child-friendly and they're family-friendly, and they're like, we don't want to get into the racism thing because, you know, the companion might be a black person and they might be a Middle Eastern person. And they go through history, and, no, and, and they're not expected to have somebody react to that. Well, this this time, is, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, Sean. Hold on. Hang on. I want to hit this. No, hang on. Because this is. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. (laughs) Because I want to just quickly say. The the exact opposite. I don't know if you watch Timeless. Yes, I have. The exact opposite. Where everywhere he went. I mean, it was a problem that he was that he was he was a, he was a black guy in the yeah, you know, in, yeah. in, and in they the finally States do that in Dark Civil Rights. That's a good that's a good example. I do know what you're talking about because I like that show, even though it's gone. Uh, but uh, I especially loved that episode with um, Abe was it Abe Lincoln. I don't remember, but um, I know what you're saying. But in this, but for Doctor Who, this is a first. Fifty plus years, they have never tackled racism. The two, the, he has a female, as, as you both know from watching the first and second episode, he has Yaz, who's, they call her the Spanish girl. They don't know she's Middle Eastern because back then in the 60s, 50s, I mean, they didn't know what that meant. And you got the, you got the color guy, okay? In, in Alabama in 1955, they not only exemplify the danger that both Ryan and Yaz face. But they have to actually hide. And the doctor and Graham have to step up to not only f- complete the mission, but protect their companions and punch people in this time period. And, and, you know, they're like struggling. And the doctor herself is like, and, and again, this is not a spoiler, this is an overview. I'm not going to go into details, but I'm telling you what, when you finish watching it, I got emotional. I just couldn't believe that the Chibnall went to this deep depth, this level of a production of Doctor Who, the show we've all been watching for the last, like, even since New Who, since 2005. That's what, eight, uh, 13 years? I mean, Jesus. This is like hey, on a that, whole that's, new level. Seriously. Dude, that's, how he, that's how he rolls. I mean, like And I you said, know if what? You, if, if you watch Broadchurch, you know that, that he ain't playing around. But when, I didn't know if the BBC would allow it with Doctor Who because the brand is very family friendly. When they do Broadchurch, they don't. It's sort of like um, post watershed, you know, because the subject matter. Like yeah, but at the same time, you know, there's a there's a certain kind of educational component uh, that's been an important part of of the series, and I that's think true. this is this is fur- furthering that kind of mission for it. And I, I think given the state of the world today. It beat me to it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's the important to be yeah, very direct about it because we we forget our history at our own peril and and it's important to look back at at uh, what that was like and you know and and acknowledge that there are people who would love to go back to that. Yeah, and I can't wait to talk about this in depth when you guys actually see the episode next week. Uh, because, or have seen it by the, hopefully next week, because seriously, this episode was not only mind blowing. I had, I'm, as you guys, or at least Carlos knows, Sean, if you're not a member, I'll, I'll throw you on there. I admin a huge, two, there's two groups, and one has 8,000 members, one has a little less, but the, uh, there's a, a huge responsibility. I've had people, we, we try to tell people on this group, 
please be respectful. We were worried more about Jody and the misogyny, but all I wasn't even, you know, we didn't anticipate racism. All of a sudden, these people are piping up in these comments. And Carlos saw some of the reactions I had to do. I had to take action as an admin. I got a little cussy when I'm you know, telling the guy to fuck off. And then I said, oh, wait, maybe I'm overreacting. And then I said, no, wait, no, I didn't. And this other guy pipes up. And they're basically saying, this is how you, you leftists talk. And I've said, I'm not actually a leftist. Don't bring politics into this. I just don't like people <laughs> being complete dicks. And, you know, basically I had to, and I actually gave him a slight for him. And then I said, all right, I've had enough. And I got rid of him. I've had a lot of people pipe up and say, good for you, blah, 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 blah. Private message me, blah, 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 blah. But the bottom line is, is like, you, people are automatically, they're already looking for reasons to paint this episode as a uh, white supremacist racist sort of forum. And if you don't agree with it, well, you're automatically just being a leftist who's not listening to the each end of the uh, you know argument. You damn SJWs. That's what. Yeah, basically. But it, it basically uh, devolves into into a bunch of you know left right name calling and yes, which is which is a shame because the issue is 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 much bigger than than the labels people are trying to attach to it. And, but of course, they go there because it's easy to do that rather than dealing right. with the hard part of actually talking about what this is all about. It's, these, it's the immediate turn to the knee-jerk reactions, okay? Just, to be, just because people, that, just because in our, in our popular media, you know, we're addressing, you know, in this case, an historical reality that, is I wouldn't say I'm just playing itself out today, but it's certainly you know an issue today. Um, it, it's it's an issue that's that hasn't we've we haven't really you know lost yet. But you know, and this is what you know the, these types of shows do is that you know they like I said with Trek, it's not about being preached. It's about you know opening opening the you know, the window for you to see to to take a closer a look at lens to, to look at it. Uh, yeah, and and to and to get some hopefully get some introspection about it. And what concerns me, it's the people that I look. I having an opinion about it is one thing, but what it comes down to is people are afraid to have the introspection about it. People are afraid to look at themselves and say to themselves. Hey, you know what? Maybe, you know, I shouldn't be telling I, I, I shouldn't be telling a racist joke, even though, you know, I, it's it, I've never really thought about this before. I'm going to give you. Uh, be, hold on. I'm yeah, going to give you. I'm yeah. going to. I'm going to throw myself out to the wind based on what you just said. I was watching Mad Men, and, and Carlos knows I've been watching the show. Um, it, people are going to like. I don't care if you judge me about this. Example of what you just said, Sean. I want to throw this while I can remember it because you people make racist jokes sometimes. Sometimes they're funny and sometimes right. they're way no, disproportionate. Right. There's one and only one example, okay? And and is people going to go eye roll, eye roll? But I was watching Mad Men the other day, and there's an episode where Don Draper's older, she'd end up dying, but the old lady secretary. And they're watching Muhammad Ali versus uh, some other guy. And, and they're listening to it on the radio, and they're like taking bets. Was it Muhammad she, Ali? Muhammad well, he Ali, called he, he called himself say, Cassius Clay. It, well, well, but I know, but Muhammad Ali, I know, but Muhammad Ali, when Muhammad Ali fought anybody, it was usually get some other guy. That's basically who. It was. Right. Uh, well, obviously. <laughs> back in the, but back listen, back you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna understand where. <laughs> but you're gonna understand where I'm going this when I finish this uh, yep, example. I, I, I know exactly where you're going to because I was. The old lady that. says. Go on. She says, if I, wanted to, uh, if I wanted to see two colored guys fight, I would throw a dollar barrel out the window or something like that. And she walks off. Now, I, of course, agree that's completely a racist thing to say. But it was, it was the t context that this old lady said it in the 60s during this episode that made me laugh. It wasn't that I agree with her. Not at all. It was like, sometimes you have to... Context is king, you know. Well, right, and, and a lot of times, and I get where you're coming from because I, I remember that scene. She was just so fucking ridiculous. That you she, yeah, help exactly. Her is what is what it, it was. It was a it's like Archie Bunker. Case. It's like Archie Bunker. Yeah, yeah. For a prime, a very good example. And by the way, you know what I found out? It's completely side note. There is Ideal in the uh, in the company Ideal, the toy company Ideal. They actually made. I am not kidding you. A anatomically correct Joey Stivic baby doll. 
from the Archie Bunker looks, show. And he looks exactly, exactly like, like Archie, Archie. Bunker. It like, including hilarious. receding hairline, which I thought was yep. hilarious. I, it's, I, You're I, saying I, Archie I, Bunker's I, grandson I is now yes. some kind of a animatronic robot doll thing? Oh, oh, no, 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 well, no, it no, wasn't no, an no, animatronic. No, it was just a, you know, it was a toy. Anatomically correct. Right? But it's, at, yes, it was anatomically The fact I know it's his grandson is kind of sad. <laughs> and, you know. Well, yeah, but that, I found this out the other day. Somebody posted a picture of it, and so what... I did. And of course, I had to go immediately check dozens of listings for this. Now, all of my suggestions in my feed on on uh, on Facebook are Once you post the it, anatomically yep. correct. Yep, you're done. Forget it. So, <laughs> it's all Joey Stivic. Wow. The Joey Stivic baby. Yep. At your own peril. Peril, Meathead's, exactly. Meathead's son is now Meathead in general. That's crazy. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you I'm going to tell you a little sort of because I was I was thinking about this today, which, you know, of, you know, um, uh, of just bigotry in general, and and where it comes from, and 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 how we get to the point where I mean, like I said, I don't. It's people tend to have a knee jerk reaction. I think people have a knee jerk reaction to it because I don't. I think people don't want to address a lot of the issues that they you know per, personally have themselves. They, you know, they, they're. You know, I think there's a lot of shame that goes on on with it, and people just want to make, oh, this is a this is just a left wing propaganda. No, man, it's not. It's just take a look at it and get, let's let's ask some hard questions about ourselves with with these questions. You know, it's it's okay. It might, here's how it looks like. I I love the fact. I love the fact that this is. I think this is the most the greatest country in the world. But I am not ignorant to the art to our history. To we have a very flawed. And and very ugly history. And I think what what uh, I think what says the best the best thing we can say about us is that we continually try to make ourselves better. Okay, and I, I think a lot of people have have lost this this notion that of recognizing our failures, trying to learn from them. And, Chronically, that's what Archie Bunker did. And, 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 yeah, I mean, he showed us the absolute worst side of ourselves without question. But um, it's like today, just today with the boys. Okay. I heard one of them say something about, um, uh, say a joke, uh, say something about, uh, you know, I was in the other room, I was folding laundry, they were box, and I, uh, and uh, one of them, Hayden said something like, oh, you're gay, right? And I immediately went out there and I said, Hayden, let me ask you a question. I said, do you know what that means to be gay, number one? And uh, surprisingly enough, for seven years old, he had a pretty good handle on it. And we started talking about it. I said, I said, well, here's the thing. You got to understand something is that there's a long history. And I could talk to him like this because he gets a smart kid. We got a long history of people being identified solely for, you know, things that they can't help about who they are. You know, the part of their, their being, whether it be their, their skin color, whether it be their, whether they, you know, are, are males and, and they're attracted to boys or they're, they're females and attracted to girls. We have a long history in this country of people having that just be used against them. So when, as an epithet, as, as something to hurt someone. So you need to be mindful about that, that, you know, when you say something, I know you're only kidding, you don't mean anything about it, but you shouldn't just be throwing that around like that. Because, you know, you don't know who's listening and maybe they are gay. And maybe you've now hurt their feelings over this. And, you know, the, here's the thing. I have my, my you know, it's nothing that we really bring up with our kids. But we have, you know, I've got several gay family members. My kids have uh, four godparents out of, their, out of their godparents. We have four of them that are gay. And Can are, you have are, four of them? Yeah, How do you prioritize it, them? I'm just curious. It, it, it's, it's like, look, I got three. I Got wait, wait! It. I'm just wondering, like, if the, like if something happens, if you and your wife, no, if, you, if you and your wife die, how do they? Right. How do the lawyers know who to divvy it up to? Because if well, you, I, I thought you could only really have one set of godparents. I just, I'm curious. God, no, no, actually, both my kids have two sets of godparents, and that's a that's a, a Latin American thing. My wife is my wife is actually from uh, her family's uh, Panamanian. And, and, oh, all right, uh, but I, I'm just one. from a legal uh, point. But, I was just curious. I'm like, but, well, from a legal it's, point, it's specified in the will. So that's oh, how you, okay, all right. how you thank take you. That, right, exactly. This is a matter. Of, this is a matter of, of uh, this for us. This is this is. I was a, just curious. A thing. It, it's, yeah. a, it's no. It's it's all good, dude. It's you. Didn't, are you how are you gonna know if you don't ask? Right. You know what I'm saying? That, that's and that's. Oh, I'm it, never it, afraid to ask. Trust me. But dude, dude, and this is my point here. At the end of the day, this is the 
the, not with you, but it, any, everybody, it's like, no, if we're not asking, if we're not talking about these things, you know, Hayden has a better appreciation. He doesn't even, Hayden doesn't know his, his godparents. Again, it's something we don't bring up. They're just a godparents. You love them. Well, of it. course they don't want to think. It, my dad. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's irrelevant to them. They don't, they, they don't really, they don't really care whatsoever. And I, I, and I said, uh, you know, I, that, you know, you, you, you don't want to, whether it's that or whether it's, you know, saying something about someone's color, you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, right? He, of course he gets that, you know, you put it to basic terms for kids like that and they understand it. The problem I see is that we become adults and I, and it's sad to say, but it's like, we're losing that. It's, it's like some of us have just lost this notion of, Hey, look, you, look at it from the terms of how you would want to be treated, you know, for, for whatever. For whatever reason it is, whatever you know what? it's your politics, Sean, your religion, whatever the case. I've had be. to say that to adults lately. I'm not going to get into details, but I have found, as an adult at 48 years old, recently, I've moved around and moved where I live right now. I have found that what you're saying is not only true of kids, but it disappoints me that I, I when I keep seeing people that are raised. You know, you can't do anything about, you can't just fix stupid, you know. And you, and seriously, sometimes I wish I lived on the West Coast because, Carlos, you, you or oh, both of you, you guys have been living on the West Coast. Seriously, sometimes I'm on the East Coast, and I find that everything you're saying is true. I don't want to sidetrack too much about, you know, because this episode's point, but I, I, I completely agree. So what I want to kind of sort of reel it back to is everything we watch in science fiction is a reflection of the way we want life to be, the way we hope, we hope that it could be. That hope for the future is what science fiction is all about. And oftentimes... Well, when, yes <clears throat> yes, and no. I'm go just going to jump in here for a second because sure. I, I, I don't disagree with what you said, but it's not everything that it's about. It is also about using, <clears throat> using it as, as a lens exactly to see yeah, yeah. who we are today and, right. and putting who we are today and the issues we're confronting today in uh, in a different context, um, so that you can a different perspective uh, see yes. things, yeah, that you wouldn't see when you're just looking at at your day to day life from you know the perspective that you you from which you live it. Right. Uh, when you look at it from this different perspective, you start to see that there are other ways, you know, other things you need to know, and ultimately you want it to bring people back to actually being able, you know, to, to understanding what the history is. And so that it's, uh, you know, what, what you said, Sean, about feelings, I think is, is dead on. But in addition to that, behind those feelings is a history that explains why those feelings exist. And, yeah, why, right. uh, and, right. and, and we need to know that and kids need to know that uh, adults need to know that um, in, in order, you know, ultimately for uh, as a society for us to, to develop towards that society that you know we we see in science fiction that we want to be so that right. it's not just a it's not a generalized aspiration but this notion that there are steps you have to take to get to that and we need to deal with those today well yeah, and it's funny because i told you about that you know that this conversation with with Hayden today it's like as i was saying it to him i was i was literally reminded of how things were you know 30 years ago when i was growing up as a kid and 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 how it was how casual we were about it. And by the way, it's like, I know where you're going with this, by the way, George, about being in the Northeast. I always tell people that, look, I lived in central New York and Syracuse for five years, and you will find more racists and rednecks in central New York than you will in the entire South. I swear to God. Yeah. It, 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 and the Northeast is, it, 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 it has this, it has this, uh, reputation for being well, they so, catch up, so uh, liberal, but they, ca they catch it. No, they don't. So they catch up. Rural. Well, you, uh, what I love about you guys, I wish I, I really, honestly, if I was free to do whatever, which may happen one day, um, I would move to where you guys are because I even on the show Mad Men, everybody recognizes that over in uh, California, think that people are more enlightened. Like they get it. You, go, my brother moved to um, San Diego about back in two thousand, and. Everything's different. Like you, everybody on the West Coast seems to understand that good ideas and good good ways of living start over there, 
and they move their way east. Instead I think of the, I, I, living on, having lived on both the east and west coast, I think you've got, um, I, I think you, you have your representation of, of good and bad in both parts. And I think you've got, I, I think you just out here, I think the, uh, the more, the, the more progressive voices are, are, they ha, are, are more vocal, have more power. But at the end of the day, look, I live in, I live in the, I live in the American Southwest, man. I live in, in Las Vegas. I live in, if you recall, Cliff and Bundy territory. And that guy's a fucking lunatic. Okay. So if you, if you recall the standoff he had here a couple of years, a couple yeah. of years ago, uh, over land that's not even his. So, well, and, I mean, I'm not going to agree with that. I, 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 and I, my, my, my point is, I, 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 I think you, I, I there's, uh, you, you know, you look at, uh, for example, Cal California, and there. I think it's more progressive politics. But at the end of the day, again, you get areas, huge areas like California, states like California, where you have a lot of centralized population centers, and then you have just tons of empty area where it's all rural, and it's and it's and it's far more conservative in their in their ideas, and and and. And, and you know, I, I guess the terms were when the, when I say conservative, I'm talking about more of a it just you know, uh, I guess what conservative really is just not just a, afraid of of new ideas, afraid of of uh, of of things that I, they're not used to type thing. So let let me um, because we're just kind of uh, I, I could go on about this all day, but for the sake of the show. <laughs> Uh, let's just kind of reel it back a little bit because we've gone a little bit all along on this particular topic. But I love where we went with this. I think it's relevant. We talked about topics that have spun off of the uh, sort of indecency of what happened with the Rosa Parks. You know, we're talking about Doctor Who and, and we spun off of this topic a little bit. But you know what? I think it's okay. Because I think, I think, I think George, i got to be honest. I think it's better than okay. I think. I do. Exact, I agree. I I think there is going to be no exactly editing on this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think exactly it gets to the heart you, of, right. of, of, you know, why, why people are, are fans of this. Because yes. it's not, Agreed. you know, there are a lot of people who think it's about escapism, and it's not really about that at all. It's about no. being able to view the world uh, no. with different lenses. Exactly. Look, I want to, you know what? I, if I want escapism, I put on a baseball game, and I sit there for three hours, and I just let the world go away. But that's not what I want from my sci-fi. I want to be. I want it, to be my sci-fi to engage me. That's what I want. And that's why I'm here. Yep, I totally agree. And I could go. Like I said, I could go on and on. Um, well, I was. Well, to say let's uh, let's do that next week after we've all seen it. We can certainly come back. Absolutely. And yes. it, uh, having. Yes. Seen it. I mean, so think about this. I guess just as a, it's, 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 I'm giving you guys something that, to chew on, so you can go. Well, oh, I gotta I, but, watch but this look, episode. Look, look, but think about this. Look how how effective that we have not even seen this episode, Carlos and I, and look at the kind of discussion exactly. that that it sparked from this. And look, man, that's a good thing. That that's like like I said, that's like Star Trek at its very best. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we haven't even seen the thing yet, and we're talking. I mean, about I'm looking right now. While we just talked, I googled the effect. I said I typed in. Doctor Who Rosa and it's the, the internet's going crazy. Okay, and it's all po it's all positive. EW.com says Doctor Who recap the Doctor meets Rosa Parks in a poignant trip to the past. Another one, TV Club, the AV Club says a powerful Doctor Who ensures Rosa Parks is the hero of her own story. And then IO9 says let's have a spoiler laden talk about the powerful episode of Doctor Who. So those are just the headlines by the way. I'm not even clicking it. This is just what shows up when I hit a Google search. So well, don't take this personally, boys, but you know, I, I'd love to get off of this thing now and go watch it. Yeah, I'm yeah let's, <laughs> right. let's stop talking as we go watch this damn episode already. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had what, to. What's, um, what's next on the agenda, my friend? <laughs> well, you know what? There's a lot, but I'll tell you what. That, that rhymed, by the way. Uh, Superman. Is getting a, supposedly getting his own CW series, so yeah, it's a it's it's a maybe. Um, it's, it's a maybe. Yeah, they're using uh, this year's crossover event as a as a way to uh, 
the term is backdoor pilot. Backdoor pilot. Yeah. So essentially using it as a, as a way of introducing. Nerves. Yes. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Depends on ratings, reactions, etc. Um, I think it would be great. Um, it will be interesting to see how it balances, uh, uh, you know, with its sister series. Um, for me, I think one of the one of the things that makes Supergirl such an effective series is it it has an overarching theme um, uh, ab about accepting different people accepting differences about coming together about uh battling and, uh, you know yeah. uh, cynicism and so forth and um you know and, and i think that that a superman series would have to find its own its own theme that that is bigger than just you know alien of the week sean what do you think of um the cw where they're at right now because we haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks they, they the whole crossover is happening again this year um, I really don't know. We haven't really talked about this, but there's a lot happening. Like personally, I love the Tyler Hoshank Superman. Some people don't. Um, they're going to, you know, bring him into this crossover, and they said that that's supposedly a backward pilot to launch him into his own series. And, and you know what? I have to admit, after watching uh, certain episodes of a certain podcast, um, I'm not so sure that the sources are correct about this, but if it's true and they do give him his own show, do you, do you think that he take away from Supergirl? Do you think there's, there, what do you think? I think my personal opinion is that we've discussed all the reasons why um, the CW DC universe has been so successful. Um, let, let me preface by saying that we've just, we've discussed all these reasons. One of the reasons we haven't discussed that I think is very important um, is, and this is also why the Marvel television series, in, in my opinion, too, is that um, we're, we don't really, we don't have a, a Superman series. We don't have a Batman series. Gotham kind of is, but it's, you know, I, we won't really truly see, I don't think, think we'll really truly see Batman, the, the Batman on Gotham until the very end of the series. But I, and this has kind of been the point of the CW. These ca the characters that they've tended to focus on um, are not your, your super. They're not the biggies. Characters. Yeah. They're not right, the biggies. Exactly. The Fl flash well-known enough. Uh, Green arrow well-known enough. Uh, you know, a, Bl a black lightning, another prime example. Characters are well enough, but they're not they they're not the, the the headliners, and I I actually have always appreciated that, and I tend to be I'm skeptical of this notion of bringing the headline. I see because it's it's easier for me to root for the for these kind of second tier characters because they've already already got that going against them i think for the underdog in general i certainly do i'm not that stoked about a superman series i mean it was it i thought it was uh you know it, when we you smallville was was you know what wasn't really a superman series that was a clark kent series you know yeah that's um, good you yeah know, Lo, 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 lois and clark you know that was fun in the 90s but you know in in this for for this era of television i I'd, I'd, I'd rather not see them overextend themselves by doing that. I'd re I just really would would prefer that they stick to what, what's been working. My argument with that and, would be... And uh, don't go all Luke. Well, my argument with that would be, and I've talked to Carlos about this, I've always felt, and I've talked about this on the show, um, that the CW uh, is looking towards filtering... And they, they know, like Stephen Amell has probably said... Look, I've been doing Arrow now for seven seasons or whatever amount of seasons it's been because he was the first. I mean, he's probably – I know he's loyal to it, but, I mean, the, the the scheduling that they do, like with Doctor Who, like he's got to be burnt out by now. And I feel well, like – well, hold on. I be, I, hold on, Sean. I believe that our, eventually one of these shows has to be the first to say, I'm done. That doesn't mean the character is done. It means he can't. It doesn't mean he can't guest star in the crossovers. But eventually, one of them has to like go. Okay, uh, this one's done. 
this is what a sort of overextension. You were talking about that earlier. I feel sure, like but, it's, it's, but how does that bring us back to, around to, to, to this Well, because series? I feel that they're repla- they're sort of pushing to replace ahead of time. Okay, that's what I'm going. Uh, I'm going maybe, with. but uh, but I think Sean is right. Uh, there's when you go right for the big, you know, iconic character, uh, you may be undermining, you know, what what has made uh, you, you know your your formula. Um, you maybe. know, the, the thing that makes it that that's made this this universe unique. Um, and because once you you know once you get one of the one of the biggies it it will overpower everything else and the the strength of uh, all these other shows is that they are each strong in its in its own way um so i'm i'm kind of with sean on this one i think that that uh it it could end up undermining okay uh, the other Car- the other shows carlos yeah. I'm, not, I'm not trying to hold on guys i want i don't want to interrupt you but i'm looking at my feed right now and I'm reading something that really disappoints me. Uh, I reported the report say Superman is getting a CW show where they show the, the black Superman suit. And one of the people that commented on my feed, I'm not going to shame name them, um, was... Please do. No, I'm not, because he's a DJ on a, uh, on, a, on, a, on a show that has syndicated... You know, I'm going to be nice. But listen, here's what he says. He says... Oh, God, this is so disappointing. He says, and I quote, as long as Superman is white, I am good, dot, 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 dot. If they make him black, then they have lost me, dot, dot, dot. I will see, I will not see a black Superman and will not back a black Superman. It was about the black suit. He, they weren't, the headline wasn't about a black Superman. They're, he's mixing up the whole thing about the dude who plays Creed, uh, Michael B. Jordan, with this whole CW you know he's mixing it up. Oh, jeez. I'm. I, 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 and we're hoping he's just being ironic, but he's probably not. No, he's, he's complete, not being ironic. He's there's, not there's being no trace ironic. of irony on that. Uh, this, you know, I yeah. think again, it shows you how these issues are just—they are lying just under the surface of almost everything these days. Um, and uh, oh, it is so apparent in fandom. Yeah, it, it, it is just and. You know, I, I don't know why, and I'd like. I think I think we should dedicate a show to this. I, honestly, this I mean, is crazy. What I'm reading of, right a now, lot of the, a lot of the inherent racism in the fandom. I mean, for God's sake, and we've never discussed this, but the inherent racism that was that has been part of a lot of the anti Star Trek Discovery uh, crowd of uh, about uh, about. And by the yeah, way, I just the, scared a screen. The, the, I just the, shared a screen. The, the diversity casting, casting the uh, remember the claim that there are no straight, straight white men on the show. Uh, the uh, of course attacking uh, uh, Shanique Martin Green's character uh, uh, Burnham uh, for because they had to, they had to shoehorn an African American woman into there. Uh, this, these are it's like I it's like we forget this happened. This is still going on. This started just a year ago. That that we were getting this from fucking Star Trek fans of all the fans in the world. That's who we're getting this from. And so, yeah, it's out there in this climate it, in the, uh, in the Trump era. I mean, it is, it, this is, but this they're is, mixing up you know, the black suit, with, you know, the, you know what I mean? Like they're mixing up right, the movie universe and the, and the CW universe. And they're looking at black and black and they're yeah, like, people, mixing that up. Right, because people have the dumb. They don't click the links. They read the headlines, and they go exactly. From there. And, and and then they and then they just base everything on their own goddamn confirmation biases and uh, and their knee jerk reactions to any discussions of race or gender or anything else that's mildly controversial that we don't like. Back to this whole Doctor Who discussion, but you know, you see what I mean? I mean, like I said, it's this this it, it's all tying together, man. It's I mean, crazy. It's, it's I mean, madness. again, I won't, I won't on the air shame this person, but it's like, I am, but when we get done with this episode, oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to bitch slap him online, but yeah, you just wait for that one. But I'm just like, damn, I'm really disappointed because I, you know, you, here's the thing. You know, when, it, when it comes to something like that, when it's somebody that I don't expect something like that out of, I would, here's what I recommend, contact them privately. 
and say, you know, hey, look, man, I'm, I'm really kind of disappointed. I mean, I wouldn't have expected this from you. You're, I, you know, you're using whatever the case be. I mean, because, you know, some people just like I assume they're, they're going to be racist assholes. You know what I mean? I, I, I get that. It's like I, I know that that's going to come out of their mouths when I see when I see them, their their profile pick or in their name in a thread in a, in a group somewhere. It's like, oh, yep, this schmuck again. Right. But then it's like other people just like, you know, wait a minute, where the hell did this come from? <sighs> Yeah, I've never seen this type of thing from you before. So, I mean, I would recommend that that's the approach you might want to take. Just contact. I think I think first. I think that's really smart, Sean. I agree. I agree. It's clear that you're a dad because yeah, because yeah. because good parents know that you get a lot more mileage from saying I'm disappointed in you than than you do from just being mad at it's them. Funny you said oh, I do it all the time. Wait, my daughter and Sean, your your kids aren't old enough to. I'll give you a little bit of advice because I raised a teenage daughter. When the first time she came, when I was single dating her, and um, she came home from school, she put down her backpack and her a, a pack of cigarettes. They hadn't even opened yet. Fell out of her backpack when I picked it up, and I remember going, "Wow!" Because I've never smoked a day in my life, and I'm not shaming any of you guys if you guys have smoked. But for me, it was just a parent, my parents chain smoked and I was always kind of grossed out. And I've told Carlos and I've talked about it. Whenever they smoke on that show Mad Men, it kind of it makes it a trigger for me because my my both of my parents died from a smoke related, uh, you know, cancer. And so for me, it's like a touchy subject. And I grew up in the 70s uh, into the 80s, you know, a little kid when, into when it. everybody smoked. Right. Everybody. Well, right, right, right. Exactly. So it was OK to smoke in the house and it grossed me out. So when my daughter came home one day and she put down her pack and I picked it up and she was in high school and, 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 you know, the pack fell out. The pack was unopened. Even the little filter thing was on top of it. So I said, what is going on with you? And she said uh, she was stressed out about whatever, whatever, whatever. And, and I said, you're better than this. And I took her to the local hospital and I, I actually arranged for the local hospital to walk her through the cancer ward. And I can guarantee you that at least because, yes, I'm an asshole. I read her diaries afterwards. She never smoked again. She even talked about this. So I know I did something right. I don't know if she's in, she's just got married. She's 26 now. And I don't know if she has smoked since then. But at least I know that during my watch, what I did had an effect. So well, I'm not. Let, let, let me say this. Well, is wait, it, wait, wait. Is well, it, the reason I'm bringing that up is because when you have a friend that. that Shows you what I just shared with the two of you, okay? Disappointed, like you said, Sean. Say I'm really disappointed. I'm gonna do that, but I am. I'm really disappointed, and it sucks because the friend that said it has a large sort of platform, and uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Well, one one well, battle at a time. That's, that's, one battle at a time. I, yeah, I think, yeah, right. You know. It makes it, sense it, it, to start off the way Sean suggests. And yeah, then, I agree. I agree. Like with, with my kids, exactly. It's the same thing. My, the last thing in the world, like, my kids don't care about me getting mad at them. They know I'm never, I never stay mad for more than 30 seconds at them. They know this. But what, they, what devastates them is if, I, and I, you know, like Carl said, I do this all the time with them. I tell them I'll disappoint them. Because here's the thing. I, I, and I say this truly and honestly. I admire my kids. I really do. That's pretty awesome. The best kids. The, I've met them. They're great the, kids. They are, they are a reflection of the, the absolute best parts of both Proud myself and my wife. I like and, it. And, 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 it's, and I'm, I'm proud of them every single day. And, and they know this. And they know that when they do something, that's, that it, it, just, it breaks my heart. I am disappear friend. You obviously admire this guy. You, I, in my, you, and and it just to a degree. It, 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 it's well, it, even if for, for it, I respect to, to him. Degree, let's let's, let's not like, use admire. Let's use it respect. Respect, admire, whatever. But the point being is that he's at a he has a certain status for you. Yeah. And all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you ex, and you expected more from him. And it's kind of it's kind of soul crushing when um, yes, that's when fair. that yes. when, when 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 somebody you know doesn't live up to not your expectations, but their own expectations as it were. And that's what I always say with, with my kids. It's like, you know, you know, you're like you said, 
you know you're better than this. You know you're better than this. And they hang their head and go, yes, I know. And, you know, we just try to, and I always tell them, it's like, look, I'm not going to dwell on this because this is the thing. When I was a kid growing up, you know, look, my dad, my, my parents were kids when they had us. My, 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 my dad was 23. My mom was 21. Not uncommon. But, you know, they didn't know anything about being parents because they were kids themselves. Okay. And so, and when I was growing up, my dad was like, you know, my, my, my dad would, would, would uh, he would be to death a point like nonstop. And just like and when, when I was a kid growing up and with my kids, it's like, look, we know we made a mistake. We know we want to do better the next time. We can't dwell on the past. Let's just move forward. And that's it. And that's, and I think, you know, applying that for in your, when you're an adult is the way to go too. It's like back again, we go back to so many things that, you know, we know as kids, we should know as kids that we seem to forget and lose along the way as adults, you know, that's that type of thing. So I just sent him a message and I screenshotted what he said and I wanted to get your thoughts on it. I actually agree with you. I said, come on, dude, really? And I just screenshotted what he said, look, which I'm just saying, I think that's a way to sort of, you know, I doubt he's going to hear this. I really do. I don't think he's going to take the time to listen. He doesn't have any clue that I'm, he, I doubt he listens to my episode. And even if he does, I have no, no problem with it. I'm just saying this, I'm a real, I mean, I am, I'm really disappointed because I feel like, you know, what he misinterpreted about the black suit versus the black actor thing with, with Michael B. Jordan. I'm like, are you, are you crisscrossing your media feed? I mean, how are you supposed to? But that's not crossing the, the strings. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, that's maybe that should be no. But, the, well, the, the reason title why, hold the hold on, Carlos. Yeah, the reason the title, hold the on, guys. The reason I say this is because again, I'm not going to name shame, but he's a host on a very large platform radio show, so he has his voice across a lot of people. So that's what yeah, makes but, me. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with you. What what I'm saying though is, it's not. You can't just explain it away as. Uh, you know, getting your media feeds crossed, your because it's it's a it's a deeper issue. I didn't issue. say that, but that's me saying this now. I didn't say. Mm. That. I'm just kind of, I, I like you said, I'm a little disappointed. Anyways, um, let's move on from that. I'm just like I said, I'm a little disappointed. As we were talking about a very power, way, powerful you know, subject, is, go ahead. Yeah, this is this is my favorite episode we've done. I've done yet. I just want to let you guys know that it's this actually one of outstanding. Sean, Sean, you know what's funny? Even though you haven't done very many episodes with us, it's mine too. Well, good. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm really. I'm. I'm. I'm really. Uh, it's quality, it. not this, quantity. This is great. Absolutely. Yep. I think Carlos would agree. I think, right, Carlos? I, I think Maybe. that you know, I uh, one I've of en enjoyed. Yeah, one of. I you know, I think we'll continue to do better. Uh, which you know, I look towards the future. So I'm going to Carlos is so. He's so he's so pragmatic and diplomatic about everything. Me, I, <laughs> me, I'm like a puppy dog. This is the best thing ever. Arr, arr. <laughs> and well, you know I think we have time for one more topic. Carlos is, that... is the new son. Like, what was that term you used? I'm the substitute. Okay, I want to write that down because I want to make that the title up. So, okay, here we go. Anyways, uh, the substitute. Um, okay, so hang on. Oh my god, this has been an incredible episode. Seriously, I can't wait to air this one. I mean, well, I think I, if I can volunteer the next topic sure. because that we've talked about that I think is Go a good it. way. Go ahead. Go for it's it. a good segue and a good way to finish the. the Carlos, the you are a co-host. I'm not your master. <laughs> okay. Go for it. What do you want to do? Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna title this topic is Netflix growing up. Um, Ooh. as we have, uh, we like heard a, a lot of news this week about, uh, cancellations at, at Netflix and they've canceled, uh, uh, they've canceled series before, but never so many in such a short period of time. Uh, we're seeing the end of some flagship episodes or series rather from, from Netflix. Uh, Orange is the New Black is, uh, going into, is going to be ending. Um, uh, House of Cards is going to be ending, um, Interestingly, they have, we talked about, I think, about this a little bit last week. Uh, Iron Fist has been canceled. And then uh, the, I think, much more significant news is the cancellation of Luke Cage. There will be no third season of Luke Cage uh, from Netflix. And that points to um, some potential bigger, bigger issues uh, around 
uh, how Netflix is going to be choosing to use its eight, uh, is it eight really eight billion dollar uh, content budget? Um, most of that goes towards original content, and uh, you know, moving on from from these old stalwart shows into uh, expanding into some new territory, I think is is a good thing. Um, but is canceling Luke Cage the sign of a good thing? What do you guys think? Uh, well, for me, I've always said that I've agreed with a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, Michael uh, Medeiros. By the way, he's going to be coming on the show several times um, in November. Oh, great. Michael's, Michael's fantastic. Yes. He just has to wait for his family to go on a boat trip, I guess. He joked about that. Um, because he can't like, do, his, do the show when there's a lot of background chatter. But um, so he, he and I talked about this on Michael Hinman, another mutual friend of all of ours, and on one of his posts when he asked about this. And I agree with Michael, which is that I think that Mike Marvel is removing, slowly removing the license in, toward, towards their own streaming network sort of one one after another, going by like the least to the highest rated. So they're going, okay, Luke Cage and, and then Jessica Jones. And you're going to see them disappear slowly, like one by one, like bing, 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 until there's nothing. That's my well, opinion. I, well, you guys I, I, I think that I'm leaning, I have to admit, I'm kind of leaning more towards um, Carl's perspective on this. I do think you're, you're. I think what's going to happen, we're going to see less and less of the Marvel series showing up on Netflix because you're absolutely correct that Disney is going to start monopolizing all of these series to put. Well, not the, monopolizing; their, they're reabsorbing to use their own properties that they license. Right, but out. I get that, but there, I don't think this is a, the case when we're talking about Luke Cage or Iron Fist um, because they were they they those two shows struggled. Um, the first season of Luke Cage was uh, did well. The second, not so much. I, I, again, it, it, the second, I'm still not through it because it was such a slog, a, a slog to get through. Um, the first, the in the you've got the uh, the first two seasons of Iron Fist, which it, it didn't do well for him. Um, I think whereas Netflix is a very interesting company because Netflix is a lot like Amazon. Netflix, Amazon's success, and if you know anything about Amazon, what Amazon has done, Amazon, since their inception, and there's, and they, and Jeff Bezos sends out the, the, uh, the, the mission statement, the, 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 the letters, the same letter he sent out in 97, he sends out every single year to the shareholders, and basically says that, um, to sum up, we don't care about profit, what we care about is market share. And this has been the attitude of Netflix since Netflix started getting into original content, which is about 2010. Um, and I, I know this, I, I, I followed this, I, I told you in the past, I, I had a blog where I did nothing but, um, I, I did nothing but report on television. And I, I was very, very into the, the birth of the streaming service, Netflix uh, end of streaming service. Um, and, and, and original content from the moment that House of Cards was originally announced. Um, and then actually, before House of Cards, people don't realize, before House of Cards aired its first episode, actually had a series, a joint series they did called Lilyhead, um, starring, uh, I forget the guy's name, but he was on The Sopranos. He was anyway, on The Sopranos, yeah. It, it, was a, it was a fun little, the, the, um, the guy from, uh, he's also in the, uh, Bruce, the E Street Band, the Bruce Springsteen guy. Um, oh yeah, I know I, who you're talking about. Um, yeah, Sal, I, he plays Sal on The Sopranos. Yeah. Sal, right, right, exactly. And I, uh, oh, I wish I remembered the, his name, but I know who you're talking about. It, it, it was a, it was a fun show, and I, and I kind of said this, and like at the time when I reviewed the series, is that you know it's a fun show, but you know there's he's he can't act. And the other thing about this is that you've got this show. It's a it, it, where you've got, uh, um. You've got Scandinavian writers and directors uh, trying to write for Americans and direct Americans, and it's 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 pretty awkward because of it. But it, it it worked. But and this is the thing about Netflix is that they they have been just throwing money at everything to be able to get that market share, 
And whereas Amazon is finally starting to make profit, I feel like it's like only been in the past three years that Amazon's really been making any kind of real profit. And uh, it's it, because they just keep reinvesting and reinvesting the same way Netflix is doing. And I think Netflix at the point now where they've got this, they they've gotten to where they want to be as far as the ubiquity of their service. It's everywhere. There isn't a country in the world you can't go to. Would you, you say they're like uh, actually a, comp- a competitive uh, thing with Netflix? Not yet. Who's that? Amazon? Yeah. No, not yet. And, and that's not, and that's not what and that's not really what they're going for. Um, that's the. Uh, but what I'm getting at here, though, with Netflix. Yeah. Though, sorry, is I didn't that, mean to sidetrack that. I, 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 no, that no, no. I, my, my, I'm talking about Amazon as in the. Um, when we talk, when I talk about Amazon, I talk about as as the retail company. I'm the, uh, the everything else is is you know subsidiary of that, but. Um, as far as the the online retail company itself in general, as opposed to you know the Netflix model, Netflix model is very similar in that regard. That like I said, they they wanted to get market share, and the, you know there's just so much out there. People can always talk about all the good shows on Netflix, but yet they tend to forget about all the shitty ones that have on there as well. But you know they've now that they've established themselves, I think it's like Carlos said. I think now it's going to be a matter of they're going to get rid of the chafe, you know, it's going to, it's, 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 I think they do see themselves more as a premium service, a la HBO. And, um, I, I think it's just a matter of them growing up and it's a matter of, we really need to start seeing more of a return on all this money we're throwing at it. We can't keep doing this forever type thing uh, so i mean that's yeah. that's my perspective on this i mean if if a show's not going to do well i they you know they've got to at least be smart enough to say we, we can't keep this hanging around anymore all right and for the sake well, of uh, go ahead carlos no you, you go ahead george oh i was just gonna say i totally agree with sean i'm not just saying that i actually do but my only thing was that um i felt like i i, I feel like okay Daredevil season three just dropped. And I'm not going to get into that as a subject, but they just dropped it. It's getting a lot of great reception, but the the way they're kind of weaning it down, like bing, 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 you know, it's like the lower rated ones seem to go away. They're announcing the lower rated ones. So I feel like they're going to wait until Daredevil's numbers come through. But even if they don't, if they're high, my my, I, I'm sort of feeling like they're obligated, sort of uh, contract wise, to set to hold their breath because it may make people not watch it. So there's some kind of a contractual obligation, sort of like, sort of like a non compete, where they're going to say we can't say anything about Daredevil because we just dropped it. But if you notice anything that's happened earlier, it's like bing bing. Even though Iron Fist season two was, uh, as far as ratings, quite successful. So, well, we don't actually know that. Well, that's we have true. no idea. So, do we think that like they're just obviously pinging away? Because you can't. I mean, you can. Yes, you can ping away parts of the of the whole. But I mean, w- there's always been those rumors that they're going to just sort of reabsorb their their uh, their rights. Uh, this isn't like I. I, I I'm gonna if you look at what they well, hold on. What they what, if you look at what they're doing? With sort of um, like when they bought out um, Sony or well, they, when they did the oh, sorry, not Sony, Fox. the uh, Fox. Right. If you look at how aggressively Disney versus Disney slash Marvel is doing to r- sort of control all of their properties, right, little by little, this, this, it's, a, it, it's a completely different situation. Yeah, I, I agree with Sean there. You, yes, it's you, completely you, different you, because you, you go you're talking about Fox. their bigger. They're iconic. They're big, iconic. Are characters. we sure, though? Because right. it's like the little fish does sometimes mean a lot. No, but there's another. Uh, there's, a, there's a complete. There's a completely different. There's another issue that's going on here as well. Which those is those agreement. The, the those agreements for um for X Men, um for Deadpool, for um a Fantastic Four, for example. Those agreements go way back. They go back. They predate Disney owning Marvel. 
Okay. This is the, we're talking er, the, the late nineties, early two thousands, and the way these contracts were were were, were set up with these uh, these licenses were set up is that they could basically keep these properties in perpetuity, provided they kept making movies. That's why you see so many X Men films. Okay, um, obviously the uh, you know, and that, and that was the thing with uh, the, the the that's the joke about the never released. Uh, Roger Corman, Fantastic Four. It was the same thing. Oh, God. To, to hang on to that license, they had to produce a film, which is what they did. And it never got released. Didn't matter. They hung on to the license. But that. But this is what you're talking about with that. This is not the case with these shows on Netflix. This is all part of the Disney era of owning of owning the Marvel properties. Um, it's for them. I don't see how it's. It, it really matters that Daredevil, if Daredevil is successful on Netflix, it will continue to be successful on Netflix. I can't see them wanting to hurt that. It doesn't but hurt them whatsoever. We have a we have a cross universe that they've established. So can we do this? Like, but he, but they but they've established it on they, they've established it on ABC with two series on ABC. Well, third. That's right. We got the third one as well, The Inhumans. Uh, so we've got. got three. So oh, I see what you're ABC, saying. So you can see. So you could potentially universe. have. So you can particularly, if you keep just, for example, let's say we eliminate everybody but Daredevil because Daredevil is the most successful one, but they get rid of everybody else. So what you're saying is, theoretically, they could say, by the way, dude that plays Luke Cage, come back for a cameo crossover episode, even though the show is canceled. Actually, you know what? I can actually see that. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see those characters show up in different series. Yeah, I think and, and I think you'll definitely see them again. It, because I this think is, they did that, didn't they? There's, after a DS9 no had gonna... Riker come back after the TNG had been canceled, from what I recall. They had well, back TNG as, uh, as, was never as, well, canceled. They, it it sunset. Well, no, I mean was, you you know what I mean right. though. Uh, well, oh, here's another example: uh, Barkley and Troy in Voyager after the shows had ended. Shall we say? Return. Yeah, but it wasn't like they it wasn't like they said, Oh, you know, we're we'll bring him back in four years on this other show. It just happened to be a right. good creative idea. And that's not what's right. happening it, here. Yeah, this I hear is, this this it, is about you, business. Right. You've got you've got a you've got you've got a couple of shows here that had that that have you know, even creatively speaking, it have not did not have the best run in twenty eighteen to say the least. Um and so the door know, is kind of left it, open, but yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, I look and I like. The, here's the thing. I um, I I uh, Luke Cage. I mean, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. The actor that plays him. I thought he was fantastic as a character. I thought and I loved the first season, but the second season has been it was a complete drag. And if Netflix is now at the point where they're they're saying okay we got to just we got to start cutting the fat here you know it's just enforcing that luke cage is in 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 the last i don't think it really has anything to do with marvel it has to do i actually agree with you you know what people have commented well let him let him let him finish i'm sorry go ahead go ahead well yeah i think it just has to do with a a realization that you know we've just got to again cut the fat here uh it's it's more about uh, it, it's we, we got to start. We really need to start looking at at profit now because I, I I'm I'm starting to get the idea that they're capping out on their numbers. I mean, there's a you know it, it really is that ubiquitous that they're they're capping out on the subscription numbers. So now they're in the business of maintaining, okay, maintaining those those subscribers, and if and they're going to have to do that with quality is what it comes down to, and so. And there's another thing I've been noticing quite a bit of on Netflix and that they're getting a lot more reality shows. And I hate saying this, but that's good for them because it's their because, first of all, they're fun. They, the Netflix reality shows are a lot of fun to watch and you can binge them and they're quick and they're cheap to make. And, you know, it's nobody's signing up for Netflix to get a reality series, but it keeps people it keeps you it keeps you on it. It keeps you flipping through your, your the the queue in the list and saying, "Oh, that drama series I've never heard of. That looks really good." After this, this uh, this show about making cakes, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and I think you know we're they're just at the point where they've got to start maximizing 
their their investment dollar is really what I think. I think, and the Marvel shows just happen to be in, in, in on the chopping block this time. Well, not only that, but they recommend when you go on Netflix. I don't. You know, I don't think there's you guys. I don't. I don't think there's a there's a, a one reason that that explains all of this. Um, you know, I, from from the reports we're hearing about the cancellation of Luke Cage, it it uh, appears to have less to do with uh, viewership and more to do with uh, you know real creative differences between um, be- between the producers and Marvel and uh, and and the executives at, at Netflix and you know it, it, they couldn't come to an agreement about the direction of the show and uh, and frustrations there was a lot of frustration amongst all these people and uh, I mean they even put the writers room uh, on hold for a week last month um, after Marvel decided it wanted to shorten the third season from 13 episodes to, to 10. So there's clearly other stuff going on that, that isn't just about ratings and business. Now, it could turn out that uh, the attitude Mar- Marvel was taking was because it did want to eventually move this character, maybe some of their other characters, over to their their other service where they have more more control. Um, so so I'm not saying you're wrong, George. I'm just saying that that there's more at play. Oh, here I, I than, know. I'm open to this. all the ideas. That's cool. Well, well, I and if but I will I, I would like to point this out though, though that creative differences, um, even if you have creative differences, if money isn't an issue, those creative differences can become. You know, you can if if they if the if the money wasn't an issue, then you can find a way to get past the creative issues. But when you've got money in the way as well, it makes it that more difficult. That's well, not only I, that, Sean, that. but you have to look at the contract times. So obviously, there was an there was an like contract times. Obviously, it had to be coming up to the to the end where they were up for review, right? I mean, there has to be a, a part. Well, you got of you mean like you you're talking about license agreements? Yes, of course. I, I would imagine. I would imagine. I don't really. That, that's the thing. I don't. Uh, with you know. Well, I'm just saying they wouldn't make a big announcement all, like this. It's all very. Tight if there wasn't that the, big, the, you the, know? the license agreements with with uh, Netflix, it's it, it's all very. We we don't have a lot of information on those. It's very difficult. We well, we don't know that. that. That's, we that's don't. Right. But we know enough to say that if in order for them to make an announcement, Loop Cage is done and uh, Iron Fist is done. It would have to be something like they had a big boardroom meeting and said, you know, whatever, before they made such a big announcement. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, first very, of all, I, it's not one announcement; it's two announcements. Okay. Um, and and I think the reason for one announcement is very different from the reason for the second announcement. So I don't think you can conflate them and try to speculate on what the larger well, meaning right. is. Because I agree with you. I'm just saying, like that. There had to be an understanding that they're coming up the end of their agreement, their contract. We don't know that that's the end of their agreement. We don't know that. I don't know that. Do you? I don't. But if no, they're going to cancel that's... it, would would you know what I mean? I I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm again. I'm not a. I'm not an expert. I'm just saying if like if they're if they have the ability to announce that. So even if it's in two announcements, like you said. There has well, to they've be always had the ability there. to well, announce here's, here's that. The, you know, they, they can, they can well, yeah. They, they can okay. no, you're right, cancel Disney, anything anytime they want. They, they just have to give right, notice for thing. it. Or buy yeah, it out yeah, exactly. if they have a license. The thing, George, George. Go ahead. George, the other thing about this too is that you know when it comes down to any kind of contract, no matter who it is, it's up to the to the parties involved in the contract. What's the terms of, the, of of those contracts? So, this is why it becomes so difficult for us to speculate. You know, there are boilerplate. I, I know for a fact when it comes to TV, especially network television, there are boilerplate terms in these contracts that we tend to see. The problem is streaming with these streaming services. Streaming has changed the game entirely. So, you know, there. I'm very surprised to hear that Marvel Disney has that much input after they license out a series that they have that much input that they can void, they can just nullify 
their their contract. And apparently, it's true because it's apparently exactly what happened. And I just want to point uh, out that Carlos and Sh- differences have way more legal knowledge in in areas like this than myself. So what I whatever I say is merely speculation. So you guys, well, I mean, uh, a, a, lot a lot of, of this speculation is speculation, are, spec- is speculation yeah. right? But it's 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 how do we put how do I like to put this? It's informed in speculation, I, I guess, is the best way to put this. Um, the the issues with the, uh, I mean, like I said, there could be uh, numerous factors that 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 call for the uh, the the end of a concert. It's, it's like you know we we've talked about the discover the Star Trek Discovery. Um, Netflix agreement. Well, the Star Trek Discovery Netflix agreement wasn't a contract for Star Trek Discovery. It was a, it was a, for international distribution of the entire Star Trek catalog, which they had before. The, it, it was and it's been and I and it's been, it's gone two years at a time it, it, since they've had it. Okay, and this was a renewal with the additional which, um, confusing. Uh, well, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's, but it's it gets more confused. I just had somebody ask me, a friend of mine from Australia, as we're talking, and he asked me to ask you guys. He, it's not that we're live streaming, but he literally, I just had somebody ask me on my feed. He says, what is the difference between the, like you just said, Sean, the, he didn't say catalog, but he said, he's from Australia, so for them, it goes through Netflix to get Star Trek Discovery versus CBS All Access, whereas in America... We have to go through CBS All Access. Why? What is the difference? The difference is is, is literally how CBS and Netflix r- structured their contract. That's what it comes down to. Well, but the Basically, larger issue is is how you deal with distribution of any kind of content. And correct. the reality is that CBS does not have the worldwide reach to be able to promote market. And distribute a, a show on a you know 160 uh, yeah. country basis, whereas Netflix does. Um, you know, it would it, it's in the middle. CBS is in the middle of of building its own streaming network domestically, and that's enough on its plate. And so for them, it makes sense to focus on that, and then do. And, and this is what you see throughout the industry. Um, international distribution is almost always handled by uh, differently from how domestic or at least North American distribution is handled. So um, so for them, it's just a way to, to earn money from uh, additional money from their property, uh, in this case, Star Trek Discovery. And so that's just, it's a different distribution channel. Uh, and it's a, uh, in this case, we're talking about in the most efficient way possible. Because when, if you recall, when the announcement in late 2015 was made about the new Star Trek series coming out, it was, they were very clear they were going to do two things. And it was going to be the flagship show for CBS All Access in the United States. And what they were planning on doing is shopping it globally to individual markets for over the air broadcast. And by Oh, July, that's interesting. Yeah, that's well, normal. That's, that's normal. Right, exactly. And by July 2016 is when they made the announcement that said, "Guess what? We're not doing that anymore. We're just going to let Netflix do it for us. They're going to hit the entire world except for the United States." And when you look at that, it's for CBS that made so much sense to do because it took all of the uh, of the um, the energy. complications involved, energy and complications involved with with all all of these individual contracts, these separate carriers uh, or separate broadcasters um, dealing with that, dealing with the fact that you know you've got say you're in 180 countries, and you know next year you you're dealing with these you're dealing with X broadcaster in this country, but uh, you know next year. Uh, they don't want it anymore. They want to give it to somebody else, and, and you and you got to keep going. Therefore, it so it made so much sense for Netflix for CBS to include this with Netflix um, in their continuing the relationship that, that they've had for well over a decade with Netflix with the original uh, Star Trek catalog, which continues to be one of the you know the the highest viewed the Star Trek catalog on Netflix is and they'll tell you this is is you know still it's their their some of their highest viewed content still and we're talking you know the original series going you know 
to TNG to Voyage and it's all it, it, there. And you know, and look, I own everything on uh, everything that's available on Blu-ray of Star Trek. I own, and if it's not available on Blu-ray, I own the DVDs. They're collecting dust because as long as I got Netflix, I just pull it up on Netflix. And, All right. Yeah. So and, basically, know, if I can, I, if I can just sort of wind this this part down, it's simply better business for CBS to exactly. have to deal with only one entity overseas instead of 160. Uh, like Correct. They, uh, otherwise, have to. It's one contract. It's one set of money from Netflix perspective. It's great for them because they have an exclusive. Um, so everybody wins from a, from a deal like this. Um, All right. No. Go ahead. Cool. Well, I mean, that's that's basically what I, this boils down to. Um, similarly, correct. yeah. So uh, similarly, when you move over to looking at, at what's going on with with Marvel, you know, Marvel, uh, you know, it started doing these deals before it became uh, the the huge powerhouse that it is today, and so they were experimenting. Um, you know, they knew that their cinematic universe was getting. Uh, a lot of attention and a lot of success, experiencing a lot of success, um, and that's why their their big iconic characters are are they focus on on the cinematic uh, release of of those stories. But they also have, you know, a lot of intellectual property that is not on that level, and so it made sense for them to try out. Okay, let's send a few of them over to ABC and see how well it does on broadcast. Let's send a few of them over to, to Netflix and see how it does on streaming. And now we're starting to see some of those numbers, some of those results come in. Um, and in the intervening years, we've also had Disney purchase Netflix. So, so there's a lot of variables at play here. Uh, there's no big master grand plan. It's a lot of trial and error, frankly. And you know, we've we've seen the trial, and now we're seeing some of the errors. And you're going to see some readjustment based on that. I agree. Right, right. And, and what, we're, what we're talking about here is, and we've discussed this before. Well, hold on. We're, we're, One quick thing, Sean. I want to. Let, I'm going to let you finish your thought. I promise. But do you guys remember? You better. <laughs> I will. I promise. But do you guys remember when they were going to do um, the Star Trek, uh, Star Wars? I mean, underground series. In Australia, and George Lucas sort of uh, he sort of started shooting in Australia, and it was supposed to be a story about like them, uh, a group of rebels that were going to go back in time and change Darth Vader becoming uh, Anakin becoming Luke, sorry, becoming Luke, uh, becoming Darth Vader, and this was a it became this video game, uh, something sixty six, whatever level sixty six, and they ended up canceling it. But the whole point was right that. Well, what you guys just said, how they trial and error. And sometimes they spend a lot of money for these trial and errors. The thing is, is that Disney has a lot of money to try and error. So the thing is, is that like whenever you hear all these rumors like they're going to do this and they're going to do that, sometimes it turns out that the more money you have, the more deep pockets that you have in anything, it turns out you like, you know, you hear all these sort of misfires. And it it bothers me that the fans are getting worked up about what could have been and blah, 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 blah. I don't want to get into a sidetrack here, but what I'm trying to say is that what you guys just said, seriously, like they they made it, they took a chance, they licensed some stuff out, whether it was the, through their Marvel properties, whether it's for Star Wars. The point is, is that Disney has the money to say, let's just kind of feel some things out and sort of see what, what ends up landing as the actual thing? Um, oh God, I could go on all day about this. So yeah, but that started under under Marvel. I mean, even before. Yeah, I I, uh, I know what you're saying. Before the purchase, I, 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 I and you also have to keep in mind that you know, it, to be fair, until the late '90s, early 2000s, nobody knew what to do. With these, uh, in particular, these comic book franchises, were so many hits and misses, so many starts and stops, and it was it, it was just like it, it it got goofy. I mean, there I mean, there are so many bad superhero films in the seventies, eighties, and nineties that were out there, and it didn't really start getting really cohesive until the Raimi Spider-Man films. 
until the original X Men films, and that's when it really started to really come together for this type of universe. And I, you know, and I also there's I I think there's simply more interest in it because frankly, our generation is the generation that grew up on this stuff in the the seventies and eighties. I agree with you. I think we're all about the same age. By the way, guys, God damn, I could seriously go on this for like the next five hours. But I'm, no I, kidding, I, we're super geeks. I think honestly, we've gone beyond <laughs> uh, the time frame that I normally. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if this went beyond two hours. But I will say this: this has been a fascinating conversation, and I want to continue. I, I I don't want to cut it off, but we have to be a little bit like you know managerial here. Well, or at least I, I want to. I, I, I want to. I do want to close out with one thing. That All right, go ahead. About okay, closing thoughts. Off. Closing thoughts. Yes, okay. yes, yes. When it comes to Netflix, we've discussed this before. Uh, the, the 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 thing with the television model, we've had we had the same television a model for television um, for well, got seventy years, uh, and now so everything we're seeing right now, as as far as you know, I said it's becoming ubiquitous. Streaming services and us have different ways to access uh, art and everything, but it is all in its infancy. So, uh, truly, it is compared to what preceded it. I mean, we had seventy years of doing things exactly the same way. So, we are going to see a lot of a, a lot of uh, trial and error, as Carlos put it, by, by Netflix by throwing things out there, hoping, seeing what will stick, seeing what works, CBS All Access, seeing what works with them. And so I don't think it's going to be, it's possible for us to say, this is definitely what's going to happen with this industry because the industry now is changing so rapidly. Yes, that I agree. It's, it's going to be, it's, it's kind of like we can speculate, we can you know, use our common sense here and we can you know, see how things have gone and, and see where it's taking us. And, and come up with some, you know, like I said, informed speculation on it. But it, it's it's very difficult to really say, yep, this is definitely what's going to happen. It's it's kind of like there's a lot of waiting and seeing that we that we're just going to have to do with this. And it's going to be, you know, it is going to be frustrating because there are going to be people out there. There's, I guarantee, there are Luke Cage fans out there that are pissed right now over this. But then again, it's like Carlos said. You know, these decisions were made based on a number of factors that we really aren't privy to. If they're pissed and, enough and they want to be really Luke Cage fans, they're going to punch their way to getting uh, them to, uh, do, to just like, you know, it's kind of ironic. But think about this. How many shows, well, not too many, have been uh, Netflix picked up because the fans wanted it? Maybe one or two. And we've heard about this recently. And I, can't, I can't quote them right now. Versus like back in the day when Star Trek did their thing with the letter writing in. And sometimes shows get saved by fans just being passionate. Now the Firefly fans will be will be like, ah. Oh, yeah, but I think those are those are the exceptions that prove the Yeah, role. that's true. Uh, right. I'll, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll agree with you. Yeah, uh, generally speaking, you're not going to... You know, it's been nice that Amazon and Netflix have canceled. But here's the reality of that. By doing what they're 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 picking up shows that are already established, and that the production costs, the initial production costs, are already sunk into them to begin with. For example, the Expanse on Amazon. The Expanse is, is a great, perfect example. Yes, it it's, is. It's absolutely perfect because they have all these sets already. Okay, this is already built in. These are built in sunk costs already, and so you know the 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 risk to them. Is minimal because they've also got the rights to the first three seasons. Let's not do. Well. Go, let's not go too crazy, boo. We got and to... here's well, and here's the important part is they Amazon has always had the rights for the first three seasons. There's a reason That's why correct. sci-fi, uh, why sci-fi canceled this series. They couldn't make any money off of it from just a first run. That's you know, it. TV right. shows make their money over a long tail. And um, yeah, don't and, you have to that, like do four seasons or something? Well, like? it's different with streaming, but uh, but the point is <sighs> that um, you know you you need to retain control, uh, financial control over some of right. these properties in order right. for them to to make money if they're if they appeal to a niche audience. And um, and Amazon and Netflix are built for niche audiences, and if they yep. own the long term rights. 
to these uh, to distribution as Amazon did, it made sense for Amazon to be the one to be the new home for for the expanse. That, that's correct. Sci-fi. The problem with the expanse sci-fi is that they had literally had first run rights. That was it. They were not. They could not make. They didn't make any. They couldn't make any money off it in second run syndication whatsoever. So, and they don't own the show. They were, they were, uh, they, it was a licensed show to begin with. So it's as great as the show was, the kind of massive numbers it would have had to need to do for sci fi to be able to make money on it. It just, it just wasn't there. You know, the, the, and as Carlos correctly points out, Amazon has had the rights from the beginning. And so it's, it was a no brainer. Well, that makes sense. All right, guys. I love this episode. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I, told I, you. I actually hate cutting you off. I had to pick. I'm sitting there listening to you guys, and I'm like, oh, man, I, when should I jump in? Seriously, I, I love everything we discussed. Uh, Carlos, as usual, where can people find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at CPedraza and at AxeMonitor, and, of course, on Facebook at uh, AxeMonitor. And Sean? Where can people find you besides uh, on this episode? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, this episode, you know, um, cra- crash and Halloween parties, things like that. That's uh, that's what I'll be doing for the next couple of weeks. So. If you want me to like, <laughs> I'll, all right, I'll tell you what. If you want me to link something, you tell me, and I'll link it when this episode gets uploaded, which will probably be tomorrow. So, guys, you already know where you can find me, obviously, because I'm going to link it all on this episode. So there's no point in me even saying it, because uh, if you have to hear it. You, you can. You might as well just look at what you're looking at. Uh, anyways, I love this episode. I thought we had a fascinating conversation. I can't recommend the newest Doctor Who episode enough. I think Sean and Carlos brought up some amazing points about everything we talked about today. So I'm hoping you guys will join us again. This was, again, Super Geek 2, Episode 11. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks, George. <laughs>